evening, good morning, wherever you may be around the globe in the chat room, on the other side, on another planet. This is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera, and uh, tonight, tonight we'll be talking about Mars, and we'll be talking about, uh, well, um, certain groups of people packing for Mars. But I'll tell you more about that in a moment. First off, this broadcast is coming at you live from the east coast of the United States, the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, and the websites, www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Go on over, become a member, be informed, and by all means, inform others. And uh, I am uh, finally that little throat thing that I had going on there. You know, it didn't last long. Uh, It seems to have gone away. Uh, just about, I just a tad thing, you know, I never went to extremes, thank God. So I have to believe this, uh, since I've been dousing myself with vitamin C as a, a, you can hear, I have it right here. Um, a guest of mine had uh, told me about the miracles that he has been pulling off with his own health with large doses of vitamin C. And, you know, you want to get natural stuff, not, you know, uh, pharmaceutical garbage. But uh, uh, so anyhow, um, I've been doing it myself. And I got to say, I've seen some pretty, pretty damn good results, Um, you know, on a whole scale of things. Uh, For one, inflammation, anybody who's ever had a heart issue uh, before, uh, you'll know that one of the signs is usually you get swelling uh, in the ankles and stuff. Well, then after you go through some kind of heart surgery, me, I had a stent put in, uh, you know, so you still get a little after that. Well, this knocked it right. I mean, just totally gone. It's everything's good. Um, so, yeah, not bad. And, and it seems like when stuff starts to come on, it doesn't last. It's It's like it gets nipped. So far, so good. So uh, anyhow, a uh, little props there for vitamin C. Um, yeah, we, we you know we give a lot of props to things that work, including medical marijuana, which uh, you know uh, Christie, um, big butt there, uh, running for president. He said if he was president that you know he would make the feds enforce the laws against. It. So basically, everywhere where it's legal, they'd start kicking in and busting them and. And so on. So let's let's be glad he's not calling the shots. Tonight I've got Tanya Maddenford and Frank Jacob joining me. They put together a really, really good, I, I guess you call it a movie. I call it more, it's more like a, a, of a documentary. Um, I watched it. It's, it. They did an incredible job on it. It's called Packing for Mars. And uh, they spoke with many, many, many people uh, regarding it. Whistleblowers, radio show hosts. I mean, they talked with a whole bunch of different people uh, uh, about, you know, what they knew, uh, including uh, Andrew Bishago and Laura Eisenhower and many others. And this documentary is, it is, it's really good. It's uh, about two hours long and, and uh, I couldn't get enough. I love talking about these things. I certainly love learning about uh, Mars and, and and all that good stuff. I mean, it's it just, it's incredible. So we'll be talking about that tonight um, with my guests, with both my guests tonight. And I'll tell you a little bit about them both uh, when we come back from our break. I'll give you a little breakdown on the bios. Uh, I do want to read a little something here as well uh, before we go into our break. So if I get time, I'll I'll get into that. Now, I do have some news as well that I'd like to shoot out there, but not before I give a shout-out to our radio affiliates, K98 Talk, SHR Media and Pundit Press, High Point Radio, the top of New Jersey, covering New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania on 1620 AM and 100.5 FM. I hadn't mentioned that the last few shows because that station had had some issues, but uh, it is 
going to be back up. So we'll give them props. Uh, voice of Onset Harbor Radio, Warham, Massachusetts, uh, on WAFR 87.5 FM. Hello to all of you. And I'm telling you, folks, we're trying to pull in more uh affiliates because we you know we want to get out there we want there there's been so many uh who have well the same people i shouldn't say so many but it's been the same people controlling the information for such a long time it's time that some new people uh take over and and give the people the real truth and i think you know i'm ready i hope everybody else is all right, so getting into a little bit of this news, comets can't explain weird alien megastructure star after all, they say. So uh, the weirdest star, they say, in the cosmos just got a lot weirder, and yes, they say it might be aliens. Uh, known as KIC 8462852 or Tabby Star, it uh, has been baffling astronomers for the past few months after a team of researchers noticed its light seemed to be dipping in the uh, brightness in a bizarre way. And they proposed some explanation ranging from a uh, cloud of comets to orbiting alien megastructures. Now an analyst of historic observations reveals the star has been gradually dimming for over a century, leaving everyone scratching their head pretty much on this. So they're now saying that it's not a cluster of of comets or asteroids or or but they don't know what it is. They just they could rule out that it's not uh, any kind of rock um, drifting around the stars. So that does make it quite a bit more interesting, now, doesn't it? I think it does. Mystery booms plague New Jersey residents. Uh, that's another one that uh, I found interesting today. I always like to cover these ones because this happened a lot. As a matter of fact, it was happening here. I haven't uh, heard anything since I think December of last year was the last time. Well, it might have been November, actually. Uh, the last time I heard anything, but uh, since then, I've not heard anything. But yeah, mysterious booms plaguing New Jersey residents. And this isn't, you know, they've been getting a lot over there, too. Um, this is like the third third article that I've pulled up now uh, in the last year about in different areas, too, of New Jersey, who's, uh, they're experiencing this. Law enforcement agencies have been left baffled, they say, by a spat of unexplained explosions in Fairlawn, or Fairlawn. Uh, they say it's in a, a phenomena that has been reported in several counties over the last few years, and now residents of a small town in New Jersey have become the latest to hear a series of mysterious booms, which some have linked to the sound of a cannon uh, that it might make when it's being fired. Now, I'll tell you what I heard. It sounded like, it almost sounds like, uh, wow. I mean, it's just really loud. It almost so it sounds like a, like a freight train's coming. That's the way it sounded to me, like a freight train's coming. And you could actually feel a vibration from it. But then you go outside and there's nothing. There's no jets going overhead, no 18 wheelers flying down the road, no, no trains. I mean, so what's causing it? Are they doing something below ground? Or or is there something that is nearing our planet that is disrupting a whole bunch of things? They, listen, it's still a possibility. I know a lot of you will say, oh, I don't even go there, but you know, and I'd like to not go there. But, you know, there is that small possibility that that's the case. As a matter of fact, when we talked with my guest tonight, um, they'll probably bring that up once or twice because it's come up in the research that they've done. I mean, anytime you're researching uh, ancient civilizations on Earth or Mars or what have you, this kind of gets thrown in the mix. You just can't help it. You can't get away from it, I guess, unless you want to avoid information that's available. I mean, I don't want to do that. 
So anyhow, um, they say that the local residents uh, have continued hearing this, and uh, there's been many witnesses who have come forward, and it is linked up on late night in the Midlands dot com uh miraculous results from uh new ms treatment wheelchair bound multiple sclerosis patients able to walk again after stem cell therapy see i think there's uh quite a bit quite a bit we could do for quite a bit that uh, disables people and it's not done because you know it's funny you got these other countries who are doing this stuff like stem cell therapies and 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 you know getting people literally getting people back on their feet again and then here in the united states it's i'll write you a prescription let me write you a prescription we got, yeah we'll get you a prescription oh and here's another prescription for the side effects from the first prescription oh and if you still can't handle it here's a prescription for some painkillers and you could just lay there on your couch like a zombie watch 350 channels and don't worry about nothing right uh, a pioneering new stem cell treatment is reversing and then halting the potentially crippling effects of multiple sclerosis. Patients embarking on the groundbreaking trial of the new treatment have found they can walk again and that the disease even appears to be stopped in its tracks. So why aren't we doing Why aren't we doing more of this? Why aren't they doing studies? What about the studies for uh, marijuana oils and for baking soda and all the other 400 or so uh, different ways that we could cure cancer. And how about uh, some of the cures that are out there for AIDS? And I mean, why aren't these things being implemented? You, well, you know why, right? It's all about the the mighty dollar. Uh, anyways, this is linked up under news and discovery as well. So, see, there's always hope, folks. The doctors they'll tell you, "Hey, you've got this or you got that," and what you're supposed to do is get depressed because they've got a medication for that. And then after you get depressed, don't worry. The anxiety about, "Oh my God, I might die," they'll give you something for that too. And anything else that comes along with the bad news, the doctors like to give you. Here's what you do. This is what I do. I can't give you medical advice, but here's what I do. I go to the doctor, I get a diagnosis, and then I get on the phone with the many brilliant doctors who I've had on the show, and I come up with alternative uh, methods for myself. And uh, so far, I'm alive. I mean, you know, you're breathing poisons, you're drinking poisons, you're eating poisons. I mean, you got to count your blessings, right? Uh, gas wars, um, 46 cents a gallon, folks, in uh, an area of Michigan. It's uh, Hunton Lake, Michigan. And apparently they're all battling for business and uh, they're getting gas for uh, under under 50 cents a gallon. Fifty Under 50 cents a gallon. Boy, it makes you want to go out and, and buy an SUV, don't it? Uh, starting Wednesday, by the way, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn to a line in the night sky. Get ready for a spectacular sight in our skies this week, they say. For the first time since 2005, the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn will all be visible at the same time. And you could go to earthsky.org because that's uh, where they've got, I think it's going to be Wednesday, January 20th of 2016, obviously. So, um, you say it'll rise about, oh, 6.50 a.m., but I guess that's going to depend on where you are. So, um, I don't know if you're into looking at the sky, and I'll tell you what, it's a lot more interesting than looking at a smartphone. We are going to take a break, Carol. By the way, happy uh, Martin Luther King Day to everybody um, who celebrates and what have you. Uh, it's hard to really celebrate much when we've got a country that's just falling apart, just absolutely falling apart. Again, get over to LateNightInTheMidlands.com, become a member, be informed, and inform others. And we're going to have another... Yes, yeah, another live show. I, you know, I can't really give details yet, but uh, in the next, probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll have another live show uh, taking the airwaves. Here, we'll uh, actually run after my show. So, uh, so 
Should be interesting, anyhow. Oh, and by the way, you know, I decided to go and check out some things, you know, from uh, back, I don't know, back when I first started. Like I said, you know, some of the shows I knew of then that were just starting themselves. I said, let me go back and, and look, and let's see. And there's some networks and things out there. And I So I go back, and I'm checking some of them out. And, you know, it's amazing to see that some of them had never, and most of them are gone, but, but some of them had never advanced. They never, they never done anything to better what they're doing. I mean, they're still just, too, the quality is still horrible. The, some of the shows are still horrible. And it's just, I'm kind of baffled how people don't get uh, a little, I don't know, you know, a little spark in their butt and want to make things better. I mean, come on, it's 2016. You don't need to sound like you're talking on CBs anymore. You really don't. You can, there's so many better ways of doing things. I, I, I guess I'm lucky. You know, I've got, I've got Ira, I've got, uh, Jolene who help out here. And, uh, you know, I, we were doing all right before, but now pff, I, this is a lot better. I mean, that's what you want. Uh, innovation, making things better, uh, given the truth, but, but not, you know, we give you so many opinions here. The quality, the sound quality, I think for the most part is usually pretty damn good. And, uh, but I don't know, there's some out there who just, they're, I don't know, they CB talk. Really? And I'm not going to mention names or pick on anybody. It's just, holy cow. You, I mean, you've been in it for, you know, as many years. You know, come on. It's time to step up. This is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. We're going to take this break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes, folks. Don't go anywhere. And remember, go on over to Late Night in the Midlands. Become a late nighter. You can have the late nights without the late nights. We'll be back. This is Dick Farrell here to tell you about OxySilver, legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. You've heard Dr. Leonard Horowitz and experts urge you to avoid deadly vaccinations and illegal operators selling stolen OxySilver and OxySilver copycats. You've heard experts tell you about suppression in alternative medicine and confusing propaganda in healthcare and the truth movement. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and Oxy Silver, Liquid Dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top shelf probiotic. Use Green Harvest as a great tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight. And Zeola, a natural clays for detoxifying your body. More advice, all these products and more are available from thecureshop.com including Oxy Silver, the world's most powerful silver hydrosol. Electro energized to put risky injections, toxic antibiotics, and deadly drug pushers out of business. Oxy Silver is covalently bonded to water. Unlike any other silver product using the frequency of chlorophyll 528, what Dr. Horowitz explains is pure tone love, the universal healer. NASA originally developed covalently body silver hydrosols to keep astronauts healthy in space. Dr. Horowitz added the 528 frequency to NASA's formula and more. Oxy Silver works three ways to electrocute dangerous germs better than anything, far better than all leading silver products and without any risk. Oxy Silver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing. So help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at healthworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's healthyworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy Oxy Silver and other great products in package specials at great 
great discounts from thecureshop.com. Buy OxySilver, GI Flora Pro, Green Harvest, Zeolove, and Love Minerals at great discounts at cureshop.com. That's cureshop.com with two Ps. C-U-R-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. Or call toll free at 1-888-621-7611. That's 1-888-621-7611. Do it now. Late night in the Midlands. We're building a bridge to the truth and beyond. Share our content and use the hashtag LMM Radio for your chance to win a free subscription. Those who use it at least 10 times a month will find themselves entered into a drawing every month to win a free two-month subscription from Late Night in the Midlands. So spread our news, spread our website, and use hashtag LNM Radio. Attention LNM Radio Network listeners. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the LNM Radio Network by calling 605-562-4203? No smartphone app or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 605-562-4203 to listen to the LNM Radio Network on any phone, anytime, anywhere. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the listen live button at the top of the homepage at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Become a late nighter without the late nights. And subscribe now to help Late Night in the Midlands bring you the best guests with the best information. Is there proof of God's existence in our government's records? Author Jose Colazo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light with his new book. Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist. No more nuclear testing and more. You could find Jose Colazo's book, America's New Slavery, on Amazon.com. This show is for the mentally sane and for those who accept an alternate reality to the lie you have been told. If you're politically correct, politically brainwashed, or politically insane, then I recommend you turn the dial immediately and go back to the lies and distorted reality that makes you feel secure in your unsecure life. We cover everything should not be mistaken for we go along to get along. We are not those other shows who guide you down a dark hall because seeing is not beneficial to their bottom line. No, we turn a light on so you can truly see what lies ahead. We are not alternative, but if we were, then we would be an alternative to the lies, not the news, because sometimes the alternative is no better. We are independent. We are LNM, and we are saying it like it is. LNM Radio, exposing the truth, one show at a time. Hey, late nighters, I have a secret I want to share with you. What if I told you there's a way to hear some of our show content free on YouTube? Well, it just so happens there's a guy who is honest and supports late night in the Midlands big time. And He owns a YouTube channel I highly recommend. Non-Human Entities. Yes, Non-Human Entities. And if you do not have a pencil handy, no sweat. You can just click one of the many banners on our website. Non-Human Entities. That's Non-Human Entities. Again, just look for them on YouTube or click the banner on LateNightInTheMidlands.com for Non-Human Entities. Imagine, if you will, a man, a media, speaking the truth. Imagine a show that covers UFOs, ET races, the paranormal, and the not-so-normal. A media that speaks the truth no matter who or what it leads to. Imagine, if you will, a media covers everything. (laughs) Folks, you just entered the 
LNM Zone. LNM, keeping it real when others don't. On the east coast of the United States, from the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, you're listening to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. To talk to Michael Vera, dial 803-392-4566 or around the world on Skype. Just use Skype ID LNM Radio. All right. Yes, Monday, Monday. It is Monday, but it's a good Monday. Good Monday night because we've got a couple really good guests joining us who really went and dotted their I's, crossed their T's, went out and put together this documentary that is just, if I may say so, very, very professionally done. I mean, it is... It kept my interest the entire time. I mean, how could it not? We're talking about Mars, folks. And I think that, and I've said this before, I think that you'll find if, if, if we could get to the absolute truth and put the whole puzzle together, I think you're going to find that Mars plays a big role in what and who we are here today. I just, I think there's a lot more to it. I've seen some wild footage, too. Um... I've seen some pretty wild footage. We'll get into it when I get my guest on here. I don't want to spoil anything. The website, www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Go on over, become a member, and be informed. All right, so it says here, the. I want to read you uh, what they've got here because I think it leads kind of right into uh, everything. The 21st century is upon us. All right, a little scenario for you. Tell me how familiar it sounds. Worldwide tensions are mounting, and a new globalist society is rapidly accelerating towards a massive shift in the way we live our lives, the priorities we set, the values we esteem. Discontented hearts are organizing mass demonstrations against human injustices, new discoveries and findings are threatening to topple over power structures, uh, systems of, of thought, science, and beliefs, uh, and again, old power structures. War and global financial crisis are looming while doomsdayers are projecting total environmental destruction. Around the world, people seem to be waiting for something big to happen, but nobody knows what that big something will be. These are apocalyptic times indeed. And uh, this movie that they've put together, uh, inspired by a 1970s science fiction novel entitled Alternative 3, one man armed with uh, nothing but a camera, folks. Anyways, we're going to talk to uh, the both of them. And, uh, you know, these are my favorite kind of movies, the ones that are seeking the truth. And uh, these two are definitely seeking the truth. Uh, we've got uh, Tanya uh, Medenford, who is joining us. Also, we're going to have Frank Jacob joining us. Uh, Tanya is the driving force behind the Cutting Edge Motion Picture Company, Screen Addiction, LLC. She has produced films at budget, various budget levels and uh, divides her time between working on major Hollywood studio pictures and independent features. Tanya has collaborated with many celebrities over the years, and uh, there's a whole lot more uh, to her her bio. But if I continue reading, folks, uh, we'll never get to the good stuff. That's the guest. So I'll let them lay out uh, a, a bigger picture of the background. Uh, Frank is an award-winning international filmmaker, visual artist, director, and composer. Um, and he joins us uh, tonight as well. And uh, again, this movie is packing for Mars, and I'm looking forward to talking to the both of them about it. So why don't we get going here? All right, I'm going to bring them on. We got Tanya and Frank. Good evening, Tanya and Frank. Uh, do I have both of you here, or is it just uh, one or the other? 
Hi, Michael. It's Tanya. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Well, I'm trying to patch Frank in as we I'm speak. I'm in. Oh, great. Right. Well, hello to you hey. too, Frank. Hello. How's it going, Michael? It is going great. And I just I want to start out with saying that uh, the film that you both put together is fantastic. Great job with that. Well, that, that's always great to hear. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a great job. It must have been a lot of fun um, going and talking with everybody, and, and 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 you know, just doing doing the 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 I guess the investigative side of it. Well, one of the most rewarding things about making films like these, and I always kind of look look at it like you get the opportunity to sit at the foot of the masters and just let them sort of spill their their information out and you have the opportunity to gather it all together and make it available for a group of people or a crowd of people who probably never have the opportunity to because it's really all about getting this important information out into the world to make it to change it for the better absolutely now now let me ask you and when i ask questions you could both answer anybody either one of you i don't i don't really care i'm looking forward to talking to both of you tonight um give me a little bit of background like what what got you both interested in taking up a project like this with mars i mean you must have seen something that said hey <laughs> might be yes, something uh, there absolutely absolutely I, I guess i'll jump in on, on and, John, and tanya will, will will sort of jump in at some point it all started with me, I believe, um, and I, many years ago, I had been given a copy of this legendary cult sci-fi Alternative 3 from a very, very respected man in a, in a town in Canada where I was staying for a while, and he, we weren't even really on the topic of Mars or anything, we were actually talking about uh, organic foods and natural healing and then he pulls this book out and and starts going off the deep end saying yeah this book is fiction but it's actually the truth and it got me intrigued and he gave me the book and i read it and i thought to myself hey this is really a crazy story how could this be true because everything we're being told about nasa by the authorities um it, you know, it doesn't line up with what's what's written if this book is true. But nonetheless, I could never really let it go for for many years. And of course, you know, then you kind of get immersed in your life, and you don't really have an easy time integrating this kind of knowledge or this kind of information into a sure. a balanced life in society where you're trying to fit in with the normal way of people thinking. But it was many years that had passed, and I was. Um, I'd gone through different uh, kinds of productions, different sort of art forms, and I was looking for something that would kind of encompass all of the things that I'd been, all the, the skill set that I'd been developing over the, the years. And I'd started a job as an editor for a television station, and I was thinking, well, you know, it would be kind of cool to do a really high level, as high level as possible job at a film that would talk about subjects that normally don't really have the opportunity to be presented in a very glossy or nice cinematic way. And I stumbled late night once on a broadcast uh, of Laura Eisenhower being interviewed, and she suddenly brought up this thing, Alternative 4, and got into Alternative 3, and I thought, no, this, and she was talking about being recruited for a Mars colony, and I just went, come on, like, is this, <laughs> this real? Like, this, 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 like, I heard, a, it all came flooding back, you know, the book and the intense passion this guy who gave it to me was all about, and I thought, okay, now, now this could be the story to use to go after this idea, and that's kind of how it all started. I sort of made a vow, like, if I, if I get in touch with this person and I find them and they open their their doors and say, yeah, come on, let's let's do this, I figured, and it's very much like the beginning of the movie says, you know, the universe opens the doors for a fool wishing to know the truth. And I set out on my journey, literally, as it says, with a backpack and a camera, equipped myself with some high-level, high-quality um, gear and, and just went out there thinking, okay, I'll, I'll find the people or they'll find me. Uh, and it was not long after that that um, I actually ran into Tanya, and that was uh, another really fateful meeting. But that also set in motion a whole other gateway 
of 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 um, people and information, and actually sort of set in motion the whole Scully and Mulder concept that ended up being integrated directly in the film. And it is a true story, wouldn't you say, Tanya? Absolutely. It was completely serendipitous how we met. And uh, I literally met him only after he had filmed his first interview. I knew many of the people that he was seeking uh, to to interview for the film. And we aligned and immediately teamed up. And it was a total uh, road trip adventure, uh, something I hadn't even expected. I saw the dailies. I saw what he had shot. It was very cinematic. I was totally into the concept and the idea. And we teamed up. We went on the road. I'm, we went to all these clandestine locations and went to these locations where there had been teleportation, um, time travel associations. And it was, it was fun. It was, it was a very cool adventure. And it's been now five to six years. That was five, six years ago. So it's been now five years plus in the making. And and here we are. You never know just how long one of these projects is going to take you, Michael. You just uh, you kind of figure. Well, I mean, I was the idea of making a feature documentary five years ago. I was still new to making something of that length. I, I've done a lot of films, co- shorter films, but a, a full length film. You kind of figure, yeah, I'll have it done in about a year or so, you know. And then you realize after a year, oh my God, it's just it's just no way. You know? Well, well, that rabbit hole it just keeps yeah. going. <laughs> totally pulls you down. <laughs> it really does, and you know uh, something else. I found uh, I, I found myself familiar uh, when I was watching your movie because you know a lot of the people who you have spoke to, I have actually interviewed on this show myself, uh, such as Laura really? Eisenhower, uh, Andrew Bishago. Uh, and and uh, even Kerry Cassidy and others, and so um, I right. found that yeah, that was that was. Uh, I guess I'd like to know what what did you both uh, what did you both take out of it all? I mean, what uh, what was your feeling uh, generally? I mean, when I spoke with uh, especially like Andrew Bishago, um, I didn't get the feeling not one time that he was lying to me. Purposely, well, you know, I I didn't yeah. get the feeling. I I felt like he he really believed what he was telling me. Well, I think for me, starting a project like this, I've always I have kind of the personality that has been skeptical about what's being presented in the mainstream media to us from a very early age. So it was nothing. It was really nothing new to me to discover that wow, indeed, it's true that there is another parallel kind of reality going on out there. Um, and it was just, it was a, what you, what happens is you end up finding yourself, you know, behind the camera and these people are telling you this stuff and you're listening while you're filming. In our case, you know, we were a very small crew and we really felt we wanted to stay away from, you know, having lots of equipment and the whole intimidating aspect of cameras and lights and all that stuff. So a lot of it was very, very intimate. And so you're you're experiencing this stuff and you're just you're going like, wow, did, did they just say that? I mean, <laughs> and, you're, <laughs> and you're just taking it in and you're not really it was not a, it was not about um, kind of setting any limits or guiding or steering it anyway. It was just about allowing these people to tell their story because you know what you're doing is you're kind of creating a historical document when you make one of these films it's like a time capsule you know and like you say you don't know uh how to i mean a lot of these people walk out of programs the whistleblowers they have nothing but this this, the clothes on their back so they they can't exactly pull out a binder and start laying out a, a powerpoint presentation for you of what of what they've experienced or been in on so you want to take it in you want to allow them their platform and you know the the future will 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 tell uh, we want to know, uh, just like you do, you know, you want to know what, what is really going on. And we really see ourselves as roles, our roles as just putting this stuff out there, allowing people to watch it and, and letting their own internal radar, which I believe everyone has, especially if you looked into somebody's eyes. And that's one of the reasons we use really close camera angles so you can look directly in these people's eyes because, you know, they say the soul is, is connected through the eyes that your, your little, your truth radar will come up and you will, you will know if it resonates with you or not. And it's not about, um, you know, quantifying it. It's about clearly letting their information flow out and, and, and just, you know, putting it out there for people. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tanya, what was it that got you uh, so interested in the topic of Mars? Well, I knew so many of the people that he was seeking to interview. I mean, it really was one man's camera with a with a backpack, and he set out on this journey. And it, when we sat together the, for, for, for the first time, I saw that the people that he wanted to connect with, I had actually done several films with Jose Escamilla, one, one of our presenters. Uh, fantastic. He's done UFO, Greatest Story Ever Denied, and Moon Rising, and Celestial. He just re- released his recent movie, UFO from outer space and uh, which delve into the subjects of Mars and also moon anomalies and and the like and I knew Andrew Bishago and I was familiar with many of the topics uh, that Frank was was seeking to explore and so it was a natural fit and literally it's like Frank had described it became like this (laughs) X-Files Mulder and Scully (laughs) going out in this crazy like adventure um, to discover the truth and to, and really, like Frank said, it's allowing those that were presenting. And granted, we initially uh, set out to maybe interview a handful of people, seven to eight. There are 16 presenters in the film now. It actually um, took us five plus years, but every single person that played a role and contributed is so important to the message. And so we kept allowing, uh, you know, the universe to to bring us the next person to to share their story. And it all created this huge... Um, picture because even for us it was like a big puzzle you know and each person was bringing a little bit of information to the puzzle and we always stayed neutral in our approach you know to to say okay well what's really going on and we'd sit there and it's like as Frank said at the foot of the master listening to these incredible stories and he can tell you I mean we have hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage and to put all that in and condense it all in yeah, it and consolidate all that into <laughs> two hours, that's yeah. that's a challenge. But ah, it was just, you know, it was just a natural, for me, a natural road to take. And Frank and I have done uh, quite a few films together. We did the Klaus Donner Chronicles. We did Solar Revolution. We did Stranger at the Pentagon. And it's interesting that Mars would come next. So we've done films about the Earth and about Venus and about the Sun. And now we're talking about Mars, which are all the surrounding heavenly bodies and planetary systems around us. So it it's, yeah, it's and, and, and an I, adventure. I, I personally feel like Mars is probably the most important uh, for us to, I mean, outside of the moon. Uh, I think Mars is the most important for us to uh get the truth on because i i've seen some pretty convincing stuff i mean i've had some really serious researchers who have been on my show and has presented me with photos that they've blown up and and so on i mean i i see pyramids i've seen uh faces not one face but more than one face i think something like four faces now uh that Mm -hmm. have been found so a lot of things up there that of course nasa blows off real easily and saying oh it's just uh, the trickery of light and no there's there's more up there so i mean a lot of these people who are coming out and talking about it i don't believe every one of them but i do believe what they're telling me i you know i don't believe that every one of them went through what they're saying they went through but i do believe that the technologies they're talking about do exist and that some of them are actually you know telling telling us the truth well one of the things that i i always say is that if you knew that, like, let's just say you had um, unlimited funds and, and, and a great uh, sphere of influence among the most talented and gifted people who you could attract with that vast amount of money, and, and you found out through this, and say it's even maybe it's an off-world you know, connection as well, um, let's posit that. And you knew that something was going to happen that, and that you could develop technology to do something about it. You probably would. So the idea is not far-fetched that there could be technology which leads to the red planet that goes back decades kept out of the light, which to this day would be kept out of the light 
simply because maybe you've got some altruistic, you know, belief where you think you are really are doing the right thing by not telling the masses about this because you need to, like, save the human race or whatever. Uh, I think that it's it's not a far fetched idea that this would happen. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, and and you know, I despite. There being, I know there's going to be people who can't handle this kind of information, and I guess I'm a little selfish in that sense, and I say too bad. Uh, we, I think we all need to know. Um, again, if I found out Mickey Mouse, and I've said this often, if I found out Mickey Mouse was our God or whatever, you know, I, I'd accept it. I mean, whatever the truth is, you know, I'm good. <laughs> just, just tell me. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. And the thing is, I think that it's better to put it out there, uh, in a healthy environment of discussion than to put our heads in the sand and just pretend that uh, everything's normal. And let's just run to the next H and M and buy a new pair of jeans. You know, right. there's an old adage that goes, "It's it's not what you don't know that gets you in trouble; it's what you do know that just ain't so." And the system and the conditioning and the program is such that. People get in these fixed ideas and ways of thinking, and they're, they've built this framework. And it's so important to stay open-minded and look at the world through the eyes of a child and, and be willing to explore new possibilities. And, yeah. it's, and that's how we're going to get to the truth. And it's the cognitive dissonance. Like we talk, that's one of the themes in the film, mm-hmm. as you now know. I mean, that's, that's a very important one to talk about is just this this embargo on free thinking that our rigid society has created and you know by all means to its credit for the idea of setting up a stable functioning society but at some point that stability stands in the way of future development yeah i agree uh, and you know there's the the people's way of thinking it has been controlled people haven't thought for themselves for a very long time and but i do see where a lot of people are waking up i mean certainly the internet had a lot to do with it um you know and and, and people are getting outside that box now a lot of people are anyways mm-hmm. and so that's yeah. a good thing and i i think that they better hurry up and get outside that box because i think whatever the secret's been I don't think it's going to be able to be kept secret much longer. I think that at some point the truth is going to come out. And I, yes. I think it's going to be much bigger than any of us thought it was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit more. Uh, now, I, I was reading where, uh, and, and even with talking with some of these whistleblowers, they believe uh, that the elite are hiding something such as maybe a catastrophe that could be coming to this planet um, and that they're setting up on Mars. I've heard this. And and as well as they've got things set up under the ground here on Earth. And, and i got to say, I've seen some pretty convincing evidence that they have farms and even cities and roads underneath our feet, which is, I know it's hard to phantom, but uh, so what say you? I mean, after talking with everybody, um what do you think? I mean, do you think that they're, uh, I don't know, the elites, the, the very rich and powerful are uh, setting up on Mars, maybe? Well, I think that it's, I mean, after talking to, for example, let's look at Bill Ryan. I mean, Bill Ryan and Kerry Cassidy have probably are probably the two people that have literally talked to the most uh, whistleblowers on these really fantastic topics. Mm-hmm. Than, than anybody, you know, you could almost have to say, because they started, you know, really many years ago. And that was one of the reasons that I thought it was really important to go talk to them. And they, you know, the thing you have to look at is there's, there's you, you know, you can never really, like I said, you can ne- these people don't have evidence in their hands in most cases. You know, they, they have, uh, aside from photographic forensics, which you were mentioning earlier, which are coming out, that shows some really compelling evidence that, there's definitely structures, you know, and we, and we show some of this material in the film as well. But I think the most, the most compelling thing is that you have a cross-section of people that don't necessarily communicate or didn't know each other beforehand, bringing out information which is consistent. And so you have to ask yourself, like, what is this phenomena of disclosure that's taking place where people are bringing out uh, evidence of a totally 
different society that seems to exist. And that's why, you know, we call it a breakaway civilization in the film, to borrow a term from Richard Dolan, which, you know, which is the idea that there's a group of people which early on, maybe it was the time, uh, some people say it was a time of Roswell-ish, you know, when the crashes and the craft began to appear more around the time after we started detonating atomic bombs in the atmosphere, that these this interaction began. And I think that this technology then began to emerge and pretty soon went into the private sector because essentially, you know, people like technology attracts money and the people with the money don't want to necessarily share their information in, a, in an open source kind of way so they can't profit from it or perhaps there's an altruistic thing behind it where they can't save everyone so let's just save a few chosen ones which is the theme that Laura was talking about where she was approached by by this group of clandestine people but you have these consistent ideas and you have the pattern in history that talks and Mars plays a very very powerful role in history there's many many words in the vocabulary of of, uh, of our language which are literally taken from Mars so there seems to be this really intense connection between Earth and Mars more so than any of the other planets around us so I think that, you know, we have to be open to the idea that there's a lot more uh, history we are sharing in this planet with ours than we're being told. I think if you sort of put all the pieces of the puzzle on the table and you looked at it with an open and, uh, and, and, and fresh mind, you would realize that, hey, like there's too many points of connectivity here for there not to have been a connection between our two planets. That's true. And, and, you know, I think the same way. Uh, you know, I, I'm reminded when I look at pictures um, that, uh, you know, aren't photoshopped by NASA because they do, they hide so much. Uh, when I do see, I see pictures, and it reminds me kind of of Egypt, uh, you know. It, yes. It, it really does, and I think there is a connection there. And and here's another one. I don't know if, if either one of you had an opportunity to speak with Dr. John Brandenburg, um, but uh, and maybe if you ever follow up on this, so you might want to speak with him because he is a nuclear physicist who uh, worked with NASA and says that the the sci- the they did anal they did an uh, analysis of the air and the soil and what have you on Mars uh, with their little rovers and he says that the the signs that they got on Mars would be equivalent to what you would expect to get here on Earth say if a nuclear bomb went off so mm-hmm. so he believes that nukes actually went off on Mars. Um, he, he says it wasn't no asteroid because you would see the big craters. And, and these things are obviously blown up in the air because they didn't leave craters. So I found that interesting as to you look at where we are right now. We've got all mm-hmm. these nukes. I mean, we could blow this planet to smithereens if, if we yes. wanted to. And, and so, you know, it's not too far-fetched maybe, huh? Michael, I want to go back to your last question as well, and okay. that involves uh, what the elite have planned. And, you know, there are many scenarios in play. And the ARC scenario, you know, there's a television series right now, and maybe a lot of people have seen it, called The Heroes, and now it's Heroes Reborn. And it's all about how they're shooting people to the future, and they're creating this ARC and this possibility so the human civilization and the human species survives. This could be one scenario. We know about underground facilities. We know about the elite agenda. We know about possible breakaway civilizations and Mars recruits. And all of that is discussed in the film. But then there's the aspect, and you just brought up an astrophysicist. We talk to quite a few quantum physicists, physicists, biophysicists, and... One thing that we need to take in consideration are timelines. And when we talk, take into consideration timelines, there are multiple possibilities. And Luca Scantaburlo was a, a, an incredible presenter in our film. He talked about Nibiru, Planet X, the coming times, apocalyptic times, even projected a timeline of 2029 mm-hmm. of events that could take place in this planet. But I think it's really important for the people out there because there are so many challenges on this planet right now. 
And I think it's really important not to go into the place of fear and to really be in a place of just open-mindedness through seeking and also um, creating a different scenario for our outcome. I think there are, and, and quantum physicist, even Guliana Conforto, who was in Solar Revolution, great physicist, just wrote an outstanding review for Packing for Mars. And she talks about this with, with our timelines, that, that the projected timelines are just timelines predicated on certain planetary alignments or certain advancements of the human race right now on this planet. But there are multiple outcomes and I think that with regards to the projections of Planet X or with regards to the possible off-planet civilizations or, of, you know, the Ark or the elite planning some sort of doomsday scenario, I think we really need to consider that we really can alter the future of humanity depending on what we create in terms of our timeline. Because we're all together in this collective field. That that is very true, and and you know, but my question always comes up then in that aspect is then uh, might we be on the wrong, the bad timeline because we're seeing all these things that you know would indicate that the lead are up to no good. And I agree with you. There, you should not fear this. I don't fear it. I don't lose any sleep over any of this when I, you know, at night. Uh, but you know, it's, it's also good to be aware. And that's kind of what you both are doing is mm-hmm. you're making people aware. And right. I like that. Well, we have to, we have the opportunity to change those timelines and it could be that, you know, when we put a film like this up, we're not saying this is written in stone. We took the, the premise of alternative three, which was that let's let's look if look at this concept that there could be this survival colony having been established on Mars, and where's the evidence that it might be true, and what would be the motivation behind it? And of course, you know the the, the immediate things that come up are global warming and planet Nibiru and causing havoc, and these these trends are there, and this information's out there in the timeline that we're in right now. But I like to look at it as I always describe it as like we're at a central station and all the timelines are like tracks laid beside each other at the central station, Mm -hmm. train tracks. And we're all traveling on these. And when you're traveling, when you're leaving, if they were all leaving simultaneously, we'd be on, if we're on these different trains and they're all like timelines and we're looking, we see each other in the other train for a long time because the trains are close to each other. But as we change our ideas and as we become aware and more conscious and wake up as humans, we begin to... Uh, see other people so eventually the trains that are beside us to represent the old way of thinking in the old world we're connected to they begin to get further and further away from us until they eventually totally disappear so this idea of jumping to another timeline doesn't necessarily have to happen instantaneously it can happen over a period of time and this you know and time is really an illusion in itself as well like we have Ernst Zinkowski in the Mm -hmm. film talking about it it's just it's a sequence of events it's like a bubble that our our soul created for us to experience a cause and effect concept so that we can see an idea from its start to its finish but time doesn't really exist so Mm -hmm. and this is what's coming out more and more in quantum physics now so we have the opportunity and it's a great point that I'm really glad Tanya brought that up because we can very quickly sort of focus and anchor ourselves in on the message that, oh, okay, well, this stuff is happening and it's going to come and get us. No, we're not really trying to say that. We're trying to put this out there in the film. So maybe it provokes people to say, no, mm-hmm. you know, that's not how it has to go down. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, well, I and I've always thought that too. I said, well, if, if it's written in stone, then we really don't have any free will then, do we? So there must be, there must be options. There must be forks in the road. And, I, and it's probably up to us to uh you know raise our consciousness and and understand you know how to take those forks in the road uh that being said i've always i've always looked at positive i mean even in the in the face of death um i've looked at the, the positive that hey okay so if i die you know i'll go on 
Um, I'm sure that I'll still be researching these things. I'm researching now. I would, I would guess. Um, exactly. I, I hope that's the case. Um, so well, there's a there's a lot of evidence, Michael, that you know this isn't the end, and that we actually do carry on. So, the thing is, the the important thing I think is not to get to this idea that well, if I didn't get it in this lifetime, I'll fix it in the next lifetime. We still should try to live our lives like this. Maybe the only one, or maybe it's the one we have to get it right in. Uh, or maybe by putting the effort to make it seem like it's the only one, we actually will change the future for the better. Uh, you know, one of the, the the other things, and I understand the whole timelines thing, and what I worry about sometimes is though is that like people uh, in the past have come on the show and they've made certain predictions and things. They said this is going to happen, and then it won't happen. They'll say like I've had a whole bunch of Planet Xers who told me you know we were going to be gone, we were done. And then you go back yeah. and say, oh, well, it was a different timeline. I say, and, you know, it kind of makes me fold my arms and tap my foot, you know? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's, I don't doubt that there's, there's other timelines. Now, uh, so based on, on the experts you spoke with, the researchers, the whistleblowers, the, you know, what did you uncover? I mean, did it open up more rabbit holes for you, which it probably did? <laughs> or did it, did it totally. solve? Totally. <laughs> yeah. Did, we did, still have no answers, really. I mean, you're seeking the truth, but uh, you come to no conclusions because the rabbit hole really is just that deep. It really is. It really is that deep. But, uh, you know, uh, with Andrew, um, he, I mean, I've watched even on Jesse Ventura's show, uh, he went back to one of the places where he was apparently jumping from. And I'm thinking, you know, you guys uh, went, you know, you went and visited places. I mean, did you come across anything that would i mean you've talked mm -hmm. with you know residents yes. and stuff right so incredible I mean, absolutely we did yeah yeah mm -hmm. we found out these places really did exist and we did find out independent cooperation that others uh chrononauts as andy likes to to call them uh were involved in programs in those areas so that for us was a big aha moment because we weren't actually expecting that and there's that there's that part of the film where, you know, I, I guess I maybe we don't want to give it away for those who haven't sure. seen it, but it does come back uh, as a theme. And, and, and we try to, you know, we try to explore all those areas and, and look for evidence in those areas because many times you often hear ideas from people that are far out there. But and, you know, you have a, if you're the kind of person that is open and wants to believe this stuff then you take it for face value. But there's a big difference between just accepting something and then saying to yourself, I want to go out and check those places really exist. Because Michael, if you go there. we literally drove out in the middle of nowhere and we knocked on doors. I mean, we. <laughs> the cool thing is we shot this film, even though it looks like a multi-million dollar picture, we shot it really on a covert style camera that looks nothing like a, it looks like a still camera. And when you get out in the public and you're meeting the day-to-day -day person, they think it's just you have, you're a tourist, you have this like normal camera hanging around your neck. And we were filming the whole time. And yeah. oftentimes the still camera was rolling as a motion picture. And we knocked on, we knocked in doors of complete strangers. We went in the middle of nowhere. We showed up at trailers in the middle of the desert saying, yeah. you know, here we are. We heard these stories. We knocked on doors of like, you know, normal civilians that we thought had been there for like 10, 20 years and say, hey, have you seen anything strange here? And it really was like this amazing adventure in the middle of nowhere. And the crazy thing is people started talking and people started talking about multiple things that they heard and they knew and things that they did. They heard about They're that really happened open. 20 yeah, to 30 years idea. ago. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere. They're like country people and they're like oh yeah this place went under fire and oh we had this weird guy that came and we <laughs> had this kid that came that told us a story about like time travel that and he was part of some know. program and they and they literally will open their doors and we started corroborating all these stories and went oh my god like it, it, it was we 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 
put together the dots of multiple different things in crazy locations in the middle of nowhere, even pulling over a UPS mail guy going, hey, was this <laughs> once a schoolhouse? And, and you know, we even when had you, stuff that we didn't include that was really oh, wild. We, had we walked so up to, much stuff that we walked we up to people that, you know, were directly involved in Incredible. heading up some of these programs, went into their house and we had, we had yeah. secretly wired ourselves to, yeah. to record the whole conversation. This whole thing was uh, done and, and it would go, it would turn into complete fuzz. Like there was some kind of weird, like, you know, uh, dome of of cryptic uh distortion because as soon as we got close everything went fuzzy and we and we didn't include it in the final cut of the film yeah, but there's some really there cool outtakes we so. met that, that 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 were familiar with these towns when they were ghost towns we're talking people that had been there 30 40 years and they were all corroborating these stories and and uh, multiple different people, unconnected, unrelated people, basically saying similar things. The name Donald Rumsfeld comes out by complete strangers in the middle of some trailer in the middle of the desert saying, yeah, this guy, you know, and it's like all this stuff. And so we started putting, it was a mystery. It was this grand mystery we had to solve. And we had to put all these little pieces together and go, wow, what does that mean? No, we didn't get all the answers, but I think that we tried, we did our best within Mm -hmm. the time and the budget and everything that we had to just find enough of the traces of it to put multiple aspects Mm -hmm. of it together. The researchers, the whistleblowers, the hard evidence on the ground, uh, and just, you know, the intuitive flow of it all. We easily could have made an eight-hour film. And and I I (laughs) promise you I would have sat and watched every minute of it. (laughs) <laughs> well you know it's better to have a nice fast edited film that you want to sit and watch i mean that's one of the positive things we've heard that really pleases yeah. us because you know tanya works in hollywood and i um you know I, I basically she really pushed me to continually either get additional information added or to chop it down and keep it shorter and shorter and shorter because you want to you want people to kind of get sucked in and get pulled all the way through and that was one of the positive results is we really feel people say it's like that, that diamond okay, you want to that press they, it even if they're tired it. they start the film and they get they get sucked in and they can't stop mm-hmm. watching until the very end because it just opens one door after another and it's a two-hour film but it's yeah. it's this compression it's this sort of polished and compressed and condensed incredible information into this diamond and, and I recommend everybody uh, take a peek at this because it's worth it. Um, I mean, I, I said I actually watched today. I, I waited till today, so it was all fresh in my mind uh, when we came on the air tonight. And I cool. enjoyed every minute of it. I, I think that you you both did what a lot of people don't do. You went and you traced the tracks. You talked to people. Uh, you you actually you know you did real uh investigating reporting i mean uh, yeah you can't ask for better than that well thanks you know what's really interesting too um it's kind of off topic but and this hap- has happened in every production we've ever been involved with is that we were standing there in a little town called madrid new mexico and it's one of the teleportation locations and one of the places that we we went just to explore. It was off the beaten path. And we stood there on these mining, tra- the, basically it's the old trailings of, of the mining um, from this mining town. And it was the old tailings that David Bowie uh, had stood on from the man who fell to earth. And this came up when we were interviewing these civilians and these locals and we were talking to them. And we actually put a little snippet of this in the film. They're like, oh, yeah, this is where David Bowie filmed his film, you know, man who fell to earth. And that's the tailing pile over there across the street. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, with, with, with what's happened this what past What you notice week. a lot is that a lot of these experiments that the U.S. or the secret government or whatever you want to call them, they or them, do they, they work in areas that are very remote and obscure. And we found out that Madrid had been a ghost town at exactly mm-hmm. that time where these supposed experiments were going mm-hmm. on. So it's it's just uncanny that, there's such wide open spaces in the U.S. for 
for things like this to take place. That's why a lot of the witnesses are real low tech too, because they're just the people that live so remotely. They're they're more, you know, they're just more connected to non tech things. They're more like living on the land, and they just take in what they see uh, or what they've heard. But they're all eager to to discover what might have actually taken place in those in those remote areas. Well, yeah, and and they don't have an internet connection per se going out mm-hmm. where they are, uh, and probably not getting any cell phone reception where they are either. So probably oh, yeah. excluded <laughs> from a lot of civilization, and that's why maybe the uh, these uh, alphabet agencies involved. Maybe that's why they don't care too much because they're like, you know, that's right, yeah, exactly. You know, they're not similar, so concerned. similar to the whole David Bowie connection was. Um, the connection we had with Ernst Sinkowski, the, the, the viewers and listeners are so fortunate to have have seen the embodiment of Ernst Sinkowski. And it was the same thing with Solar Revolution when we captured Franz, Franz Halberg, who was the godfather of chronobiology. In, in Packing for Mars, we were the last to ever interview Ernst Sinkowski, a great inventor and really forefather of transcommunication. Uh, he was a physicist, and we actually went to his home. He was in a hospice home, and we filmed him uh, talking about the chronovisor. This is like technology yes. that that is is now since deemed buried and, and exactly is at yeah. the Vatican. I'll let Frank expand on this, but to be able to witness this, and of course, shortly after we, he was so excited about packing for Mars. He was so excited about the release of this film, and he wrote us continuously. And we were so hoping, and he was there. I really think he was there in the premiere of our film, but he passed away just short of us releasing. And he was so supportive and so behind us. But the viewers are so fortunate to have glimpsed him on camera because this was an incredible. Well, yeah. And how many times can you uh, actually go and knock on the door of a physicist who has direct corroborating information about the existence of this chronovisor? Which was time travel technology. We've heard Andrew Bishago talk about it. But how do you imagine this thing? Could this be real? And you don't really have a lot of material on it out there. So to find somebody who actually talked to the inventor of it and knew him uh, was just such a, a gift. Uh, and, and it's also such a piece of our history that we need to not, we need to capture this stuff and we need to, to make it clear to people that this stuff is real. This stuff's happened and, and it may not be out technology. there in the mainstream. Yeah, this it's is, just, this, this is, is stuff. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead, Tanya. This is a technology that peers into timelines and can capture actual events and record them. I mean, this is a major thing. It is fascinating technology, and it is real. I, I agree. Uh, I, I absolutely believe that. Uh, matter of fact, I've seen, if you go outside the United States and you look, like, say, in the U.K. and stuff, and you look at, uh, you find articles there, scientific articles, you could find uh, plenty of experiments that have been being done where they're able to, they, they you know, universities are, are, are explaining how they're teleporting small objects right now. Yes, And I'm absolutely. thinking, yeah, yeah, if they could do that, the military industrial complex has probably been teleporting uh, 747s, you know. Well, I mean, I think that the whole idea of teleportation is kept very, very well under wraps. Uh, there's just a lot of enough um you know, background behind, I mean, just hearing David Anderson talking about how it's, you know, there, there's many countries involved in working with time and time travel and using uh, small objects that they tra- teleport back in time, trying to figure out if they can get messages. Of course, the military is always one of the first applications because they figure if we can use this to our advantage in warfare, then we can send messages back to the, the the war uh, the war field informing the the generals or the, the the people in charge of the operations what outcome happened as a result of what what their decision was and to change their decision to try and change the outcome in the future uh, but this stuff apparently is going on and you know you have to I mean there's this this idea of the of of the paradox of if you change the butterfly effect if you change something mm-hmm. in the past how does it change the future. But I think that there's infinite 
numbers of possibilities. And if time isn't necessarily looked at as this linear thing that we're all inevitably traveling on, then then it's, it's conceivable that all probabilities will work themselves out through eternity because every time uh, you make a decision, for example, like Michael, you decide to make a left turn or a right turn on the street uh, on your way home spontaneously, you're entering another potential future. And there's a possibility, of course, there's the 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 potential energy or the need or the desire for the universe to also experience it going in the other direction that you decided. So all of the different directions will be explored through eternity to see, to see what all the outcomes are. The interesting thing that Frank just mentioned was this interview with David Anderson. Uh, and I had known Alan Steinfeld, who was so gracious to give us access to this interview. And David Anderson was behind that technology called the Time Warp Generator. And at the time, I didn't know anything about this. But this is incredible stuff. I mean, the Time Warp Generator is something that they created where scientists stood around this device, I guess. I haven't actually witnessed it firsthand. And they literally took a rose and in real time actually brought this rose back into its infinite stage of a bud. So this, this, this rose basically digressed into a bud before blooming in real time with this time warp generator. And they have apparently taken seeds of certain plants and sent them back in time to see what it would do so that they could test this so-called butterfly effect. Incredible. And it's a very interesting thing to see this in real time. This is like crazy. That that is incredible. Uh, where I mean, where can people go and 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 research something like this? Now, see, this is something I haven't uh, heard of, and that's the whole, uh, you know, the the experiment with the rose. Uh, Bring it. That's that's fascinating stuff right there. I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah. Well, David Anderson is a very interesting character. That's someone mm-hmm. you might want to dig a little into and and look at some of his websites mm-hmm. because he's. Um, He's like a, a pioneer in this whole time travel field, and he's been at it for decades. And he, every now and then, he surfaces and spills something out, um, and it's just like little bombs of information, and then you know disappears again. So he's a very, uh, he's a very obscure and interesting character <laughs> in the world for sure. Well, you know, and the thing is, you realize that a lot of this stuff. Um, that is being done. Uh, it's very unique individuals which are, res- are achieving these these results. They're res- achieving results that, if ne- if not always reproducible by others, because there's there's factors involved here that require also the con- the level of consciousness of the individual operating the the tools. I mean that this is something Ernst told us about with the chronovisor mm-hmm. that you know they um they basically were getting results with this thing based on the abilities of the inventor yeah and i just want to go ahead frank i just wanted to expand on ernst yeah go ahead i mean we can you can go ahead i'll have a few more ideas that i can add to that um but but add Please. Yeah, so so Ernst and Kowski, just to give the normal viewer, I mean, there's a lot of movies out in Hollywood, and, and there was a movie called White Noise. I'm sure a lot of people have known it. They oh, did, yeah. Um, White Noise 1, White Noise 2. This was Ernst and Kowski's world. I mean, you're talking the inventor of, like, transcommunication. This was the guy that invented, basically, the communication through white noise. And he was able to basically cross the veil. And actually bring through what we call EVP now, electronic voice transmissions, EVP, the, the electronic voice phenomena, mm-hmm. uh, but basically communicating to the other side. I mean, this was Ernst Sinkowski's world. And yeah. this steps in realms that is really out there. But at the same time, these are physicists doing this work. And these are physicists stepping beyond these boundaries to explore what's possible. Verifiable like with the chrono- data. Verifiable yeah, data. Like the chronovisor, this is crazy stuff. They were like peering into timelines and actually not only peering in, they were actually able to record. But the weird thing was with the timelines, they could record events, but they would only be black and white. So they could only get black and white 
footage or however they microfilm or however they recorded it. I'm not a I'm not a physicist. I don't really know how it works. <laughs> but they actually went back and recorded the stuff, but it would only be black and white. And so to verify that it was authentic, because I'm sure you have many other, you know, uh, you know, factors in there that could that could play a havoc on on physics, they would actually go into our textbooks. So I think uh, Frank, what was the name of the um, the the guy that gave the infamous speech? That Mussolini was it the Mussolini? Yes, Mussolini. Okay. Mussolini gave this famous speech. Okay, so everybody knew about this speech, and it was recorded. The text in his speech was recorded verbatim what he said. So they actually went back and recorded this Mus- famous Mussolini speech, and one one with this black and white footage compared it to the text that actually said what he said, exactly. and it matched one one. So they were really, in fact, recording some timeline. You could you could look at it like an echo. Like so many times we th- say something is haunted or there's a ghost or there's this and that. And a lot of times it's, it's merely, I mean, sometimes it is a physical phenomenon, something that's present in the three-dimensional reality. And sometimes it's what we would consider an echo. And what these quantum physicists are discovering is timelines have echo. And they can actually record the echo. And they can record the echo on film. Yeah, this is insane. Like, yeah, like I mean, this was start- verified to us yeah. by also by Michael Persinger in our last film, yeah. Solar Revolution, because he was talking mm-hmm. about, he was explaining to us the scientific terminology, which a lot of the people in the spiritual uh, sector describe as the akashic record, mm-hmm. and that is that the fact is every single impression that we make in the world is actually picked up and stored in the magnetosphere of the earth and that the earth's magnetosphere is one giant capacitor like a cloud of information Mm -hmm. which holds all resonant energy and all impressions and thoughts that we've ever had in all to all of time so we have the ability with the proper instruments to actually tune into this massive amount of energy and information that's out there this is one of the reasons we talked about the early part of the film we talk about the you know the hunab ku mm-hmm. the, the the energy wave coming from the center of our galaxy that there's these particles that are now coming toward earth and they're actually affecting consciousness you know going back to your earlier comment about timelines it's conceivable and i'm a believer in this after, after having worked with Dieter Burrs that we actually don't require um some kind of like a like it's not necessary for us to have to actually follow some kind of um, do- uh, like practice or, or or dogmatic concept of, of of ritual for us to attain the next level of evolution. This is actually coming toward us, and it might actually be in the form of an involuntary evolution there is- spurned on by the accelerated vibration and frequencies caused by these particles coming from the center of our galaxy. Exactly. There is one thing that connects all of humanity on this planet, and that's the electromagnetic field. And if something changes that electromagnetic field, even though meditation and modalities and all these things can be very important for the heart and the mind and the soul, it is not about judgment. It is about we are all in the same soup, and we are all on the same planet and we are all here collectively together. And when something changes in the electromagnetic field, we all will change. And it could be one little base pay of that human DNA that shifts. But one little base pay in that human DNA that shifts, could you change your entire ability for language? I mean, Do- Dr. Persinger was amazing in, in, in talking about this, and we brought all this up in Solar Revolution, but it really is about what's happening on the planet. And you talked about how so significant the subject of Mars is. It's true. All of our planets in the solar system are changing now, and all of the planets are being affected by these incoming particles and these incoming rays, including our sun. Our sun every day emits CMEs and solar activity, solar solar rays. And every given moment, our electromagnetic field is adjusted. Heart math has, has literally 
um, devices in the earth regulating the heartbeat of the earth right now. And you can look at graphs in the rises and falls of entire human civilizations. We are talking cultures from the Roman cultures to modern day to even ancient, ancient cultures that were affected by solar activity. I mean, we think it's rises and falls in wars and political structures and all of this, but ultimately, it's not. Ultimately, it's affected by what's happening in our universe. And this is what really Packing for Mars is all about. It's about that we are directly affected and interconnected to every solar body in our system. This, Regardless of whether they're telling us it or not. <laughs> right. This is incredible. And I'm telling you what, I'm taking notes like crazy here because there's so much that, that I want to uh, elaborate on. Uh, but we do need to take a break. So hang on with All us right. for a moment. We'll come back and pick up this conversation I'm fascinated by all this, folks. I am. And uh, two really, really good guests. I'm enjoying this tonight. I hope you are, too. I always enjoy education, folks. And let's face it, when we do these shows, a lot of times it's educational for, for many of us. Uh, some of you might know all this already. You may, you know, who knows? Maybe you've been to Mars. I haven't been there yet. So, you know, we're talking with Tanya and Frank, and they are linked up on the homepage of LateNightInTheMidlands.com. This movie is linked up. You could go uh, uh, purchase it, watch it. It's well worth it, folks. It's it's great information. And um, I've got a lot of questions. So when we come back, I'll also take calls when we come back. 803-392-4566. That is 4LNM. So, again, 803-392-4566. Uh, you can also call us on Skype. Our Skype ID is LNM Radio. The website, late night in the Midlands.com. Join us in the chat room, folks. Uh, there's many ways to listen. Uh, the best way is right over on late night in the Midlands.com. So, Tanya Maddenford and Frank Jacob, my guest. The movie, Packing for Mars, folks. They spoke to tons and tons of experts to to do this movie and uh it's knowledge not being wasted i could tell you that so we'll be back in a moment folks don't go anywhere if you want to learn more we'll be back I'm Joshua Vera, and I wanted to inform you that Late Night in the Midlands is offering limited on-air advertisement. With 30 and 60 second spots available, or inquire about placing your banner ad on the LNM website, or go ahead and package a deal, but either way, get the attention you deserve and join the LNM family. Contact us at mv at late night in the Midlands .com. Again, that email is mv at late night in the Midlands .com. Share our content and use the hashtag LNM Radio for your chance to win a free subscription. Those who use it at least 10 times a month will find themselves entered into a drawing every month to win a free two-month subscription from Late Night in the Midlands. So spread our news, spread our website, and use hashtag LNM Radio. LNM fans and late nighters around the world, have you captured something on that photo or video of yours? Send in your photos and videos of ghosts, orbs, UFOs, Planet X, or just about anything content related by submitting them to the Late Night in the Midlands Facebook group or fan page, or you can submit them on Twitter using hashtag LNM Radio. And if you would rather stay anonymous, then email them to us at mv at late night in the Midlands .com. Late Night in the Midlands, we're building a bridge to the truth and beyond. Become a late nighter without the late nights and subscribe now to help Late Night in the Midlands bring you the best guests with the best information. 
Hello, this is Dick Farrell here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. So help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at HealthWorldAffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's HealthyWorldAffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy OxySilver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the CureShop.com. Buy OxySilver. GI Flora Pro, Green Harvest, Zeolove, and Love Minerals at great discounts at CureShop.com. That's CureShop.com with two Ps. C-U-R-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. Or call toll-free at 1-888-621-7611. That's 1-888-621-7611. Do it now. Are you a late-nighter? Well, if not, here is one more reason to join the family. We have added the Late Nighters Forum to LateNightInTheMidlands.com. And it is open for discussion of our many topics and guests. Now you have a place where you can share your thoughts and ideas with the entire Late Nighter community. So become a Late Nighter by subscribing on our website, LateNightInTheMidlands.com, and start leaving your mark on the Late Nighter community now. Attention LNM Radio Network listeners. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the LNM Radio Network by calling 605-562-4203? No smartphone app or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 605-562-4203. 4203 to listen to the LNM radio network on any phone, anytime, anywhere. The LNM radio network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website or click the listen live button at the top of the homepage at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Is there proof of God's existence in our government's records? Author Jose Calazzo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light with his new book. Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist. No more nuclear testing and more. You could find Jose Calazzo's book, America's New Slavery, on Amazon.com. On the east coast of the United States, from the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, you're listening to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. To talk to Michael Vera, dial 803-392-4566 or around the world on Skype. Just use Skype ID LNM Radio. Proof is out there, folks. If you just look, if you just open your eyes and look, uh, the proof is definitely out there. They're out there somewhere, and uh, probably a lot closer than uh, some might lead on. Uh, folks, this is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. I've got a couple really, really good guests with me tonight, and you could find them linked up on our homepage at latenightinthemidlands.com, right in the picture slider page uh picture slider on the home page um just click on it and take you right over uh you might want to wait until after the show though because if you get if you purchase that movie and you get to watching it right now you're not going to be able to stop i warn you so uh wait until after the show and then go ahead and start watching it but uh it, i'll tell you uh folks everything we're talking about here tonight is it's just it's got it's got my tail wagging. Um, I'm telling you, it really does because uh, this is my speed. I'm, I'm telling you these these things. This whole uh, idea of Mars and teleportation and these technologies, the time travel. I have no doubt that these darn things exist. I just boy, I would love to get my wouldn't we all? I guess I would love to get my hands on something like this, and I'd have to wonder, wouldn't you that? 
if we could tie, I mean, who's policing any of this? I mean, what if what if something like that got in the wrong hands? You know, these are. Uh, I guess I'll worry about it once if I could ever get it in my hands in the first place. But boy, it would be really nice, uh, like the whole rosebud thing. Wouldn't it be great to just? Uh, some people say, "Oh, why would you want to do that?" I'd want to do that because. I know as long as I could know what I know now and bring that back with me, man, this show could be on its twentieth year or something now, right? <laughs> All right. So the website's triple w dot late night in the midlands dot com. Go on over, become a member, be informed. And by all means, inform others. And uh, folks, become a late-nighter. That helps keep us on the air. You get access to our archives, our forums. Uh, you get access to uh, our insider videos. And, of course, it never costs you anything to listen to the live show and join us in the chat room. Um, I'm in there, too. I don't talk much because, well, I'm on the air. I'm live, and it's kind of hard to carry too many conversations at one time, at least for, for this old guy. But, uh, all right. So folks, we'll get back to it here. And, uh, we will take calls also, by the way, uh, 803-392-4566. And again, you can call us on Skype. Our Skype ID is LNM radio. We've got Tanya, uh, Maddenford, and we've got Frank Jacob with us. The movie is packing for Mars. And man, there's just so much to talk about. I hope we, I hope we get to everything. Uh, all right. So, Tanya and Frank, we are back. And I was thinking, you know, while, while you all were talking about these technologies now, um, you say that, that energy, uh, patterns, um, or, or time echoes can be recorded, right? So. Yes. What if the elites, I mean, obviously would be aware of this, and so then they would be able to go back and see really what's happened in the past and and by mm -hmm. that be, be able to know what's going to happen in the future, Absolutely. right? Exactly. So then we might better understand why they're building all these underground facilities and such because they, they know something. Sure, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so if, if that's the case, um, and we can record, uh, I mean, my God, that's, that's, I, I don't know another word, but incredible, um, uh, because, well, we could learn so much if they would just share that information. Um, we'd probably see, uh, we'd probably see humans coming from Mars and first arriving to this planet, maybe, you never well, know. Well, you know, the, the, a lot of the people that, um, I mean, there's people all around the world that are having experiences in connection with time travelers. Uh, it seems like time travelers have appeared mysteriously in, in the strangest places all through time. <laughs> to, to, to say it funnily that way, it's like the, there, there are time travels, and if time travel exists, you would have to find evidence of time travelers somewhere in our documentation, and indeed it is there. Yeah, yeah, and um, now you say there's that a lot of different kinds of time travel. That I mean, the time travel isn't really even just limited. There's several, according to like David Anderson, he was talking about different methodologies of time travel. I mean, he's his the thing he pioneered. He called it time warped fields, but you know, there's also quantum tunneling. There's like wormholes. Uh, there's different, there's much, it's a very complex scientific Looking world. past technology yeah, from that, contact. That been yeah, that's been so developed. So Jody Foster. Mm. Uh-huh. So uh, going back in time, I mean, I, I'm fascinated by that. Now, how how exactly did, did any of these uh, folks who, who spoke about this, did any of them say exactly how it would work? I mean, so if I was to say wanted to go back to 1980, would I then be that person from 1980, or would I be the 44-year-old guy I am now back in 1980? How would that work? One thing that was mentioned, and I'm likening this to the Heroes series, only because you know a lot of Americans watch the Heroes and the Heroes Reborn television series that are out there. So many of uh, television and uh, movies... Actually, they mix fiction with fact. Yeah. 
They do. And yeah, and there's uh, the character in Heroes or Heroes Reborn called Hiro Nakamura. He was a master of time and space. He talks about not stepping on too many butterflies. And he didn't want to step on too many butterflies when he altered time and space. And so... And it's interesting that he often will disappear and come back saying he tried all kinds of different variations mm -hmm. and any of them that he tries, the outcome's always going to be bad. So some things just have to be allowed to happen for some reason that you necessarily, you can't necessarily explain. We have our evolution um, that's in front of us as humanity. We need to make our mistakes. We need to learn from those mistakes. We need to have our growing pains because if we don't have those, if we don't have the freedom of choice to make those so-called mistakes, then we won't be able to evolve. I think it's a very, I think time and evolution of the soul and the collective consciousness of humanity are very, very closely linked. And anybody I think that would be a time traveler and the people that we talked to, incidentally, didn't necessarily develop the technology themselves. They were the participants in using the tools that had been created, going back to a lot of it stems back to, in our time, uh, technology developed by Nikola Tesla, who is this obscure um, scientist that lived at the turn of the century and from 1800s to 1900s, who actually had uh, early, uh, done early experiments and discovered uh, a lot of these principles and whose technology then was later adopted and taken into the private sector to be quietly developed after his death. Uh -huh. yeah, well, uh, again, it, it's, it's incredible that this type of technology exists and, you know, we're all being left in the dark about it. And, and I guess I can understand to a point, I mean, can you imagine if, you know, I don't know, gangs or something had this type of technology. I mean, then you'd need uh, people to police it and all kinds of different things. Yes. So. We had an interesting uh, presenter that presented Impacting from Mars. His name was Duncan O'Finian, mm -hmm. super soldier, that apparently went on a mission to Mars. And Many. this, yeah, and this was a very interesting component for us because we've seen, we've all seen the movies Maturing Candidate. We all know about the possibilities of the super soldier aspect. Sure. But to actually hear it connected to Mars and mission to Mars and what transpired and what he experienced, this was very interesting to us. And as filmmakers, again, we never take a stance, we always just set up the camera. We take a neutral position and we allow everybody to tell their story. And this was such a powerful story. It was a really emotional story, too, because we had a counter component, a fellow, uh, you could call her a super soldier, uh, remote viewer slash, uh, what would you say, tele telekinesis operative uh, working named Miranda Kelly in conjunction with Duncan O'Finian. They were partners, basically, in the Super Soldier program. And we set up the camera, and we listened to the story. And it was a story, basically, about their experiences on Mars and their experiences in this technology on Mars, but in a Super Soldier, superhuman Again, it goes back to all of these television series that you see now in the United States, you know, Heroes and Supernatural, all yeah. of these super, uh, well, we even have a lot of movies about superheroes, um, abilities, and you hear the story about Mars, and they're going to Mars, and what they've experienced on Mars, and it's, and it's really... Uh, um, it's a touching story because we, we get into the human element, we get into the emotional element, and we get into the fracturing of what happened in this story. Mm -hmm. One of the listeners asks, uh, how did the super soldier get to Mars? I would guess, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would guess that would be teleportation. Well, there are, there's um, the technologies that we learned about and explored in the film seem to be based on two concepts. One concept is that there is a um, 
there's a jet propulsion system far in excess of the technology we're using to get shuttles up into space and things that are that is faster and can c- transport much greater loads and obviously if you're going to be setting up a base on Mars you need to transport a lot of things there because i think before until we until a colony there is able to actually utilize the resources on the planet they're probably going to have to bring a lot of tools and 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 shelter and and whatever there initially and that is one form of technology and that's one of the things that Duncan Affinion in this particular case was describing getting there with a with like a massive um spacecraft uh and the other form of transportation which we heard about and was described was was this idea of a jump room that you can actually enter into some kind of a chamber an elevator like chamber it was often described as and within minutes you actually appear on the surface and you get out the elevator door is open you have your meetings for example and you can get back in this device and travel back to earth and go there for lunch so those are the two principal forms that we learned about Alfred Weber uh, had uh, frequently had come on my show and spoke of of that type of technology, and you know I've talked with him, Laura Eisenhower. I've talked with Andy Andy uh, Bishago, um, and I've talked with uh, many others who claim that this this whole thing going on on Mars is real. And you know uh, I've had one guy come to me and he took pictures from. Uh, NASA, they write from JPL and all that, and he, and what he did was he says that they put in the coloring to make it look like the sky is all red or or whatever. Absolutely, and yes. He, and there's a there's sort of a smear campaign, as I like to call it, and you know this was an idea that Jose Escamilla, of course, uh, opened me up to, uh, and I was I had seen some of his early works in the Moon Rising film really fascinated me, and the idea that NASA could actually be doctoring pictures outraged me and it was really fascinating to hear jose's accounts of it and and see the massive amounts of evidence that there actually seems to be a department somewhere within that uh uh let's not forget nasa is is you know department of defense so it's always going to have a filter before it gets to the public so this filtering process seems to include altering and doctoring pictures so that it looks like a totally different environment than it really is. In fact, I mean, one of the things that I found really interesting was Catherine Connolly. I don't know if you've heard of this woman, mm-hmm. but she 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 has the 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 notorious title at NASA called Pl- Planetary Protection Officer, and that means that cleanliness. <laughs> she's in charge of maintaining the planet's pristine quality because. You know, there's this perception that, of course, humans, if they land on Mars, will begin to contaminate. contaminate. They'll bring their bacteria and their viruses, and pretty soon the planet's destroyed because we're going to bring that, you know, that that destructive uh, bacteria to the planet. And the and and it's okay. Maybe it's true, and I guess a lot of people would agree that you know humans have tended to contaminate the environments that they that they enter into. However, the 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 point that I thought was very interesting that she admitted is that there's an there's large areas of Mars that actually are conducive to life, but we're not we allowed to go, go there. there. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like we, we they are sheltered off, they're off limits, nobody can know about we these, can't go to these places. Them. So what we're left with is the dry, bare, and desert uh, terrain that the poor little rovers are cruising around on trying to get snapshots for us, you know? I want to come back to the Jose Escamilla aspect because Jose has really set the foundation and the groundwork for uh, the smudging, all the artifacts, all the imaging, the NASA imaging, the clandestine projects. You can talk to Frank about this too with the with the actual uh, technology that they have to bring snapshots back from these locations like the moon where they've literally gone in and smudged um, artifacts. They smudged entire areas. And in the new movie that um, Jose Escamilla just released called UFO Greatest, um, well, it's actually UFOs from Outer Space, which is UFO Greatest Story Ever Denied the Third. 
Um, the second was Moon Rising. The first was the original. Uh, he's done so many extraordinary movies, but the most recent, he actually addresses the whole Mars aspect. And um, what is the name of that mission? Is is it the Clen- it's the Clementine? I think it's the Clementine. Yeah, and so it was they, the Clementine. Mission. Yeah, the Clementine and it was browser. The Clementine browser actually allowed Jose to go in and observe certain aspects of the moon and Mars and bring down in real time images. And when we did Moon Rising, he was really relying on this browser, the Clementine browser, to bring a lot of our imaging in that played a role in the Moon Rising film. And I can attest to this as a witness firsthand. I was an executive producer and producer of this film that when he went into the Clementine uh, browser and he would bring this imaging in about halfway through our film production, all of a sudden we could no longer access the information. And all of a sudden there was this time delay. And when we would go in with the time delay and access this browser, all of a sudden the imaging that we had actually already saved on our hard drives uh, wasn't the same. And we were getting two different images coming back. One that was the original images that we had already saved on our hard drives and others that were like a, an altered image. It was either an image that was altered or smudged or all, uh, you know, changed in some fashion. And we realized very quickly that they had gone in realizing that somebody was accessing this portal and, and, and realizing that this was making media or mainstream you know publicity and they had gone in and actively changed it and this was interesting when he released his newest film ufo's greatest story ever denied which i'm an executive producer on as well um he addressed mars mars was a new thing that he had brought to to the table and it was the same thing you know there are so many uh, artifacts. And yeah, it was the Jose images. who gave me the footage of the Hales Crater, which yeah. you see, which you see in Packing for Mars. You know, we we zoom in on this, and I basically, I I I looked at his work in terms of photographic forensics, and I'm also uh, a multimedia artist, so I spent some time with the same tools these people use, and I wanted to know if I could if I could uh, uncover what these mm-hmm. people are all seeing, because I just didn't want to take the word again of, of, of one person. I actually wanted to see if it, if it works. And, and the results of that are, of course, shown in the film. And it's very clear that, and, and, and Alfred Weber, you mentioned, he, he, made it, he made some interesting points about how they, they take, the, what their various techniques are mm-hmm. for altering this information. And they, they'll, they'll, for example, they'll, they'll, um, they'll turn it from a positive to a negative. Uh, or they'll reverse the image as well, uh, and they'll they'll horizontally flip or vertically flip the image, or they'll squeeze the uh, the aspect ratio from fourteen uh, four to three to sixteen nine, and all of these aspects, all of these elements of contortion work, and they're very easy for them to do. So it's actually not a lot of work for it. Wouldn't be a lot of work mm-hmm. for somebody to take images and alter them, and we only really have recently come uh, in contact and have and have access publicly to the the data bank of these images that are out there uh, and and I think a lot of the forensics amateur forensics researchers out there uh, and one another one we might want to mention is JP Skipper from Mars Anomaly mm-hmm. Research he's done some fascinating work and he's connecting a lot of others that are out there uh, and they are finding information and they're applying with, with images of trees and yeah. environment and water and as you know NASA just released a major statement back last year end of last year about there being literally water on Mars although they downplay and say well it's briny water and we don't really <laughs> think that life could live on Mars but yeah along along what Frank is saying there's so much evidence out there. And J.J. Hurtak was a major presenter for us, um, for him to come to the film with Packing for Mars, because J.J. Hurtak uh, brought to us original photographs of, like you were saying, Michael. JPL photographs. He was one of the yeah. pioneers. He's he was actually one of the, one of the real pioneers. And, and like you said, Michael, there are so many monuments. When you talk about Egypt and these other uh, monolithic monuments and structures on the Earth, they are mirrored on the moon and they are mirrored on Mars. 
And I know Graham Hancock gets into this with his, his studies as well. When you have megalithic structures that are also mirrored on, on mirroring off-world planet, planetary uh, bodies where it's a one-one. Proportions, and, perspectives mm -hmm. to one another and, uh, you know, interlying. If you lay the grid map of Salisbury Hill, for example, over Sidonia region and Mars, you can see direct lining up of certain structures on the planet. Cremo Matwa. Cremo Matwa, which is often uh, talked about in even David Icke's work, who was a, or is a African shaman, talks all about the pyramidal structures on Mars. And we bring that forth in the film in conjunction with J.J. Hertek's work. But he's talked a lot about Krima Watwa's work. He's talked a lot about even with David Icke and Alex Jones. And it's pyramidal structures that mirror the Giza Plateau on Mars. There are major structures, and these aren't just like, I know a lot of these photos on Mars, people can look at and go, yeah, well, that could be an animal, that could be a person, and it's like looking at objects in the clouds. But these are direct artifactual structures that can be seen in photographic evidence that are direct mirror complexes of what exists on Earth. This is major. I, I have seen a lot of good stuff. Uh, another uh, Mars researcher out there is Gary Legere, and uh, he has brought forth so many uh, fascinating pictures of monuments, pyramids, mm -hmm. things of that nature on Mars. Uh, and again, also uh, Dr. John Brandenburg and others who I've spoken with um, have really – uh, put out some really good evidence that if there wasn't life there now, there at least was. And I, I think that there still is. And, and and I've seen evidence where there's even rivers and such running mm -hmm. uh, on Mars. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of it is uh, underground now uh, because of what Mars went through uh, in its own, whether it was, the, there's evidence, as you mentioned earlier, of a potential nuclear catastrophe, which happened way back in history. Uh, and there's also evidence of a large body traveling through our our solar system, which impacted uh, the planet. So whatever life is there now had to have withdrawn under the surface for it to uh, survive. Anytime and we talk about life, we really need to consider on the surface life and in, in, in within the planet. This goes for Venus. This goes for Mars. This goes for even planet Earth. We have surface civilizations, we have inner civilizations, and as with every planetary body in our solar system, we have to consider both. Well, you know, it could be that every time this big behemoth comes through, maybe it changes, you know, one planet, they Absolutely. take turns being in the That's Goldilocks right. zone, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And no one knows exactly when this cycle really is. We can determine roughly from ancient artifacts, ancient structures, megalithic structures, when this timeline could have been. You've got the research like Luco Scantamberlo who can bring forth the information he has and when he thinks the next flyby could be. I mean, Luco Scantamberlo's information comes from Incredible. a whistleblower in the Vatican. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting to learn that the Vatican is very interested, very interested, and is, is on the is on the, is on the forefront of developing technology. And the announcement the Pope is making about possible extraterrestrial connections this is not a coincidence. And the Vatican has the financial resources to set up astro telescopes Absolutely. on both, both sides, of both poles of of the planet, and they're looking into space at a different angle than we or than most amateur uh, astronomers are because most of them are limited to the latitudes of, of the planet, not the poles, because obviously it's very inconvenient and very expensive and difficult to be located on the poles of the planet and looking into space from those positions. And apparently the information that they're finding, and we go into this, of course, in the film, you know, was triggered by the the, the extended mission uh, of of the Pioneer probe, which uh, experienced the change in its course and caused them to look at this a little closer. And then that's how they found that there's evidence. And they actually went apparently and photographed this thing. So um, I, I'm sure that you probably found that pretty interesting. 
And being a Hollywood producer, I'm totally into Indiana Jones. I love all the Indiana Jones shows. The Vatican, they're underground. We're talking Raiders of the Lost Ark. We can pretty much go to their basement and this is the wooden box warehouse of all of this incredible knowledge and information. I mean, this exists. I mean, what we consider Indiana Jones and all of these series. See, it's all about controlling society for the sake of some kind of stability. Mm -hmm. And of course, let's not forget profit motive Mm -hmm. and the technologies that we get handed down like the the, which we things we think are ultra high tech, like our cool iPhones and tablets and things. These are throw oh, off technology. technologies. These are throw off technologies that have been explored and, and exploited by some faction many decades ago. We even had a German author that we met here in mm. Europe describe to us how his father was a psychiatrist mm. for computers back in the 50s. We're not even going to get that. into transhumanism on this for conversation. No, imagine being a psychiatrist for this computers is... in the 1950s. What does that say to you, you know, yeah. about technology? Wow. <laughs> even no, computers just, needed a yeah. psychiatrist, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the HAL computer described in, you know, in, in Space Odyssey, it's mm-hmm. like this character... Uh, going kind of, you know, off the deep end, so to speak, in the film. I think, I mean, hearing this person describe how the computers needed a psychiatrist, I mean, that's pretty wild. The idea that they'd already developed such an intelligence that they were communicating and needing to, you know, psychotherapy, uh, that that blew my mind. Well, you know, probably some of the visitations that happen here on Earth probably are by... Uh, biological robotic type uh, machines um i'm guessing I, I you know i've had sightings i've seen crafts in the sky i've actually seen close up in the sky and uh so they're real uh where they're coming from or who they belong to or who's driving them i don't know uh, but we're definitely being visited. I've seen uh, you. You guys have probably come across this too. Uh, the gentleman who hacked the NASA computers, who said that uh, he found evidence that there's yes. a, 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 a the Navy has a secret space program and that they have a security force mm-hmm. in space. Yes. That's incredible. Yes. That's McPherson. I think you're talking about, uh, right? Mc, is it McKinley? McKinney? Oh, McKin- yeah, McKinney. McKinney, McKinney. sorry. McKinney, yeah, exactly. okay. And, and God bless him for getting the information out because in the end, it's about getting at the truth and the truth will not be concealed. In the end, the truth will come forward. And I think it's, it's, it's really incredible. Even what's happening in Hollywood. You know, so many of these films, whether it's Jupiter Rising, uh, whatever, or Jupiter Ascending, I think is the name of it. All these films... And television series are all speaking the truth about what's coming. I mean, They're it's safe for truth people to science watch fiction. It. Exactly. I mean, they, a lot of people are comforted by the idea that the uh, the science fiction is fiction. But, uh, you know, again, the, pre- the, the premise of the film Packing for Mars was based on a so-called science fiction novel uh, written by Leslie Watkins in 1978, and it, which was so shocking that I mean it was it was preceded by a television I don't know mm-hmm. if you know the whole story behind it but it was mm-hmm. preceded by a British uh, science report television show which came out um, and was po- it was using actors to create this story of how there was this Mars colony and it was done so well that people at the time it was like a war of the worlds in England people flipped out yeah, yeah. The station and and it was it was just and there was so much in it that when uh Leslie Watkins began researching and, and expanding on for the book he was barraged by letters from hundreds mm-hmm. of people and many of them very very highly credible people saying how did you get this information you know um this is the truth uh, and he had to take a step back and say, no, 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 I just, this is all just fiction. Can, you know, I, this is an invented story, but he had to admit himself and concede that apparently he stumbled upon something which is going too close on. close to the truth. Can I in- interject here? I want to say that just FYI for all of our audience listeners, um, Leslie Watkins and his son, Graham 
uh, Watkins, who is uh, now a publisher and author of his own. Forty years now after since the release of Alternative 3, saw the trailer of Packing for Mars and was completely inspired and blown away to the point that they literally wanted to cross-promote with us. And it's been an amazing thing because Leslie Watkins now, after almost 40 years in hiding, uh, who wrote the cult classic science fiction novel, Alternative 3, is now re-releasing Alternative 3 is a, with all new material in, into the public and is now cross-promoting with Packing for Mars. And not only that, Leslie Watkins, after almost 40 years of, re of releasing the original Alternative 3 and now re-releasing the all-new material, is now coming out of retirement to write a new book. This is profound. Uh, Packing for Mars is going to be doing a uh, special uh, sneak preview in Australia this summer uh, at the Nexus Conference with Duncan Rhodes. And we will be providing the Alternative 3 uh, book at this, at this event. But this is incredible. This is the original sci-fi classic novel author all, you know, of Alternative 3. See, I didn't Leslie know Watkins that Leslie Watkins was forward. actually still um, even around. I, didn't, I had no idea when I made the film. And so I was Packing just inspired for Mars was completely by inspired work. by Leslie so, Watkins. I mean, the thing is, it's such a, it's such a great synchronicity to know that he was like, he was just totally excited that somebody had had taken the book and had captured the spirit of the book and carried the work into the future because I think it that book profoundly affected his life. I mean he had he had people tapping his phone when he moved from mm -hmm. England to New Zealand. All of his stuff disappeared. It's all of his stuff disappeared coincidentally. His entire database, all of his material. All those letters, all that stuff that he got. It was Everything just, was well, gone. I don't know what you'd say. I mean, he just said, he says it, it just it just it disappeared. Uh, I don't know if you could say confiscated. I mean, it just, let's just say it was, it was disappeared <laughs> for him. Yeah. Yeah. The government's fairy godparents got involved. Right. Apparently. That's yeah. right. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, we've got to take one more break here and then I want to come back and finish up with you both. I've got, uh, I want to sum things up a little bit, a couple more questions. And then of course, some uh, questions from our listeners. Uh, we'll get to a few of those. And if anybody wants to call in and stay on topic, 803-392-4566. That's, uh, you can also call in using our Skype ID, LM Radio. And let's leave it there. This is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. Packing for Mars. No, I'm not packing for Mars, but apparently some are. We'll be back, folks. Don't go anywhere. existence in our government's records. Author Jose Colazo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light with his new book. Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist. No more nuclear testing and more. You could find Jose Colazo's book, America's New Slavery, on Amazon.com. Attention L&M Radio Network listeners, did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the L&M Radio Network by calling 605-562-4203, no smartphone app or internet needed, 
Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 605-562-4203 to listen to the LNM Radio Network on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Hello, this is Dick Farrell here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and OxySilver, Liquid Dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top-shelf probiotic. Use Green Harvest as a great-tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight. And Zeola, a natural clays for detoxifying your body. More advice, all these products, and more are available from thecureshop.com. Register for our free cooperative at healthworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's healthyworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy OxySilver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from thecureshop.com. That's cureshop.com with two Ps. C-U-R-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. Or call toll free at one 888 7611. That's one 888 7611 Do it now. Hey folks, do you love late night in the Midlands? Do you miss shows because of the time of night? Do you wish you could listen at your convenience? Well, we can help you out with that one. Become a late nighter without the late nights and subscribe. Become a late nighter for just $5 a month. That's right, 5 bucks a month for the paranormal, the unknown, the known, but most important, the truth. Go to www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com and subscribe right away to become a late nighter and help keep the LNM Radio Network on the air. Are you a late nighter? Well, if not, here is one more reason to join the family. We have added the Late Nighters Forum to LateNightInTheMidlands.com and it is open for discussion of our many topics and guests. Now you have a place where you can share your thoughts and ideas with the entire Late Nighter community. So become a Late Nighter by subscribing on our website, LateNightInTheMidlands.com, and start leaving your mark on the Late Nighter community now. Hey, Late Nighters. I have a secret I want to share with you. What if I told you there's a way to hear some of our show content free on YouTube? Well, it just so happens there's a guy who is honest and supports Late Night in the Midlands big time. And he owns a YouTube channel I highly recommend. Non-Human Entities. Yes, Non-Human Entities. And if you do not have a pencil handy, no sweat. You can just click one of the many banners on our website. Non-Human Entities. That's Non-Human Entities. Again, just look for them on YouTube or click the banner on LateNightInTheMidlands.com for Non-Human Entities. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop-down menu at the top of any page on the website or click the listen live button at the top of the homepage at www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com. On the east coast of the United States, from the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina. You're listening to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. To talk to Michael Vera, dial 803-392-4566 or around the world on Skype. Just use Skype ID LNM Radio. All well and good, although uh, some of you might be a little surprised to find out where we may have started from. I'm just saying, you just never know. Uh, You know, there's definitely a link between Earth and Mars. I think that there's many links between Earth and Mars. Uh, I guess some people get divided is that uh, did we leave Earth and go to Mars or did we leave Mars and go to Earth? I think no matter which way that went, and I'm guessing we were on Mars first, I I I think there was like transportation going on between the two of them. Uh, transportation, meaning, you know, just like we might commute from New York to California or something today, 
I think that's what they were doing. I, I just, I mean, come on. You look at all over Earth. Look at the pyramids all over the planet, right? You see them everywhere almost, right? So, I mean, there was no internet. There was no technology, right? So, how did somebody on the other side of the planet get the blueprints for these pyramids, right? And, okay, and how, what about Mars? There's pyramids there, too. You could deny it all you want. They're there, folks. So, I mean, how did they get the... I don't think they could have sent pigeons either. <laughs> you know, pigeons in space. I, I, I don't think so. So, how did all this come about, folks? See, you got to ask questions. You got to think outside the box. And, uh, you know, I, I say this, and I say this with all due respect, folks. The Bible... There's a lot of good uses for it, but it doesn't have all the answers. They're not all there. A lot of that has been purposely left out. A lot of, a lot has about your history. You've, so I'm saying, again, with all due respect, you've got to go outside your comfort zone, whatever it might be, whether it be Bible, maybe it's NFL football, I don't know, whatever. you got to get outside that comfort zone, and you've got to expand your mind, and you've got to focus on finding the truth because – that's why I think that's why we're here. I think we're here to discover, you know? So let's discover. And folks, um, I have discovered that if you want to call in, you may do so at 803 392 4566. So that's the call in number. And of course, always you can call in on Skype, LNM Radio. I mean, Folks, I've got, I'll say it again. I've got, somebody has called me day and night. I mean, constantly, when I get in the studio, I see, you know, tons of missed calls. And it's, it's the same guy, same, same person. And it's, uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll actually go to voicemail and they'll sit there for two minutes, not say a word. Some unknown number. Listen, if you want to talk to me, you'll have to call me during show hours. And you'll have to call in without an unknown number because I'm not going to let you set things up like that, you know. So I don't know who it is. Some Somebody who just doesn't get the message, uh, please, if you're going to call in, don't disguise yourself because um, I need to be able to know you're not calling in to crank us. So, uh, so that's why I don't take on no numbers and I don't live in the studio. So calling at all hours of the night and leaving breathing messages, <laughs> I'll tell you people, I, I, these people come from Mars. All right. So let's get back to it. And again, if you call in, don't have your number blocked. I, I don't take calls from unknown numbers. I just, uh, every once in a while I have, but I, it's it's usually not a good thing to do. So don't block yourself. All right, so let's get back to it with my guest. Uh, we've got a little time left here. Tanya Maddenford and Frank Jacob. Again, the movie Packing for Mars. Uh, I do suggest uh, everybody go take a peek at this. It is really, really good. Uh, all right. So, uh, guys, we're back, uh, and ladies, we're back. Um, Russia and the United States. Um, would you, would you say, based on everything you've looked into, would you say they're kind of in cahoots? Because I have some who say, well, if we didn't really do this, or if, if that didn't happen, or this happened, then Russia would tell on us. Well, not if they're in cahoots, right? Right. I think it's clear that at, at a certain place, there really there really are no boundaries. I think once you're if we're if we're to just accept the idea that there is uh, another level of society which is exploring and in contact, say with maybe even extraterrestrial technology or extraterrestrials, and is and it has been exploiting and developing this technology, it has nothing to do with borders it has nothing to do with american russian it's just these minds have come together um under some umbrella of some kind uh and are developing this stuff outside of national borders and national boundaries i see and now uh you you both were mentioning earlier about an energy uh particles that were traveling through space and had actually reached our sun can you elaborate a little more on that yeah, there's a there's a black hole at the center of our galaxy in a region called Sagittarius A, and NASA has been registering um, that there's been kind of a, a large 
plasma planet which has been being um, imploding wow. into into this uh, into this black hole. It's just kind of being. What's a what's a nice way way to put it, uh, Tanya? Not a plasma uh, cloud is actually entering. Uh, it's the entering. Black hole. Okay. There's there's lots of ways to describe it, but the the forces at play here. Um, that's a very mellow way of describing it, but basically this energy that's being generated by this thing, and Nassim Harriman is a great uh, person that describes how the, the black holes are kind of like a giant funnel. If you can imagine to, uh, filling your sink with water and pulling the plug, and you can watch the, you know, the spiral form uh, as water is being sucked into this funnel, um, we tend to always just think that it's going one direction. That means the water's going down into the funnel. But what, what very few people are describing or talking, and what they're only now really starting to explain to us through quantum physics, is that something is coming out of the, to make room for all that water to go in, and energy is coming out of the funnel as well. And in quantum terms, with the black hole at Sagittarius A, there's this, as this uh, huge plasma planet is being is imploding inside of this black hole this massive amounts of x-rays and plasma gamma and cosmic rays. rays and particles and gamma rays it's a big cocktail and this this cocktail of energy is flowing directly at us and somehow the way the arms of the galaxies the, of, the, the, of the Milky Way have aligned uh, this energy is hitting us uh, in a way that used to be much more obstructed than it has been and it's interesting how the Maya seem to know about the, okay. the cosmic ray coming from the galaxy. They call it the Hunab Ku. And this, this ray seems to be firstly hitting the, the, the largest body in our solar system, and that's, and that's the sun. And as the sun is being hit, it's in, in turn like a giant mirror reflecting this back at the other bodies in our solar system, causing them, among other things, to begin heating up. But the interesting is, thing is that as, as we're on planet earth getting hit by these energies the magnetic field of the earth has actually been shown to have been weakening in the in the last years and the, and the poles have been shifting and the combination of all these things mean that more of these rays are actually getting through than ever have in recorded history and the result of these rays coming at us in a nutshell is uh... and going back to the work of you know some biophysicists here there's frequencies involved of 150 megahertz um, and this 150 megahertz is a very important number because the human DNA vibrates at 150 mm -hmm. megahertz. And when you and it's been shown in history, it's like when you have a tuning fork, Michael. If you have a tuning fork tuned to a certain thing and you and you hit it and you hold another tuning fork up beside it, what happens? They both begin to resonate. And when they resonate mm -hmm. in harmony with each other, there's an exchange of information. And so this involuntary evolution that I was talking about earlier. Uh, coming from the center of a galaxy is if you could visualize it, it, it would be something like this. This energy is coming at us in a frequency, and this frequency is aligning with the frequency of the human um, brain and and the DNA of humans, and it, it will cause this resonance to begin taking place. And there's going to be a massive exchange of information, and this exchange of information is something on par of the time in history when suddenly all over the planet language began to emerge, written language or spoken language. And just like heart math has the devices in the planet Earth to regulate the Earth's heartbeat, every human being on this planet resonates with the planet. And every human being resonates with this heartbeat or this frequency. So everyone is affected by these incoming particles. Yeah, regardless of what your spiritual beliefs are, what religion you're the part of. modalities. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do with that. You're going to be exploring and, and, and experiencing frequencies which actually might cause you to have visions. Uh, it might cause you to have unbelievable insights. And we're seeing this happening on the planet already. We're seeing things are changing. I mean, the, the, thing, the mistake that people made with 2012 was that they, they tried to focus it on a specific moment. Mm. But the fact is, it's not a moment. It's a window of time. And in this window of time, these changes are beginning to take place, and we're seeing them take place all over the planet. The thing is, if you look at the media, 
it talks about the coming times and it talks about how certain solar influxes or particle waves or I'm not a physicist, but certain uh, geographical, environmental or physical uh, planes or particles take place that it adjusts our ability or even even the telecommunications ability. If we get a major solar flare, it adjusts it literally telecommunications can go down uh, our satellite systems can go down and, and we look at the human race and nobody looks at the human race we're all looking at the grid we're looking at the telecommunication systems we're looking at the matrix and how is this affected by solar activity how is this affected by our environment who's looking at the human being we are walking talking electrical antennas Everybody looks at the human race as being biological. We treat people, even in the health community, uh, the health community, uh, the health communities, as as chemical beings. We're not chemical beings. We're electrical beings. And and when a major uh, environmental or cosmic event takes place, this affects us on electrical means. We are electrical, walking, talking beings. We are. And every human being on this planet is a walking, talking, electrical antenna. And so if we have the powers that be coming forth saying, oh, well, our grids may come down and our, you know, we may have satellite, which which did happen back in the day, and this is represented in Solar Revolution. Um, well, we yeah, the Carrington like, event. There will Carrington be a Carring- There can be a Carrington, a Carrington event, and there can be a takedown of these telecommunication wire networks. We we but dodged is- we dodged a bullet not too long ago. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And and the Carrington event was a major example of this, which we, we which we actually showcased in Solar Revolution. But we forget. And I tell you, the powers that be want us to forget that we are walking, talking, electrical antennas. We are. I and mean, and they are only focused on the telecommunication systems and the matrix and what's going to happen to our satellite systems because this is money, right? This is the corporate field, right? But what happens to you? Because you are no different than the satellite systems that are out there. You're a walking, talking, breathing antenna. And if the solar system changes and the particles changes within the electromagnetic field and the certain changes happen within the vacuum or as Frank describes, we have as as cause and effect, we have particles entering that black hole and in exchange we have is as it breathes in the universe, it breathes out. What happens to us? Nobody talks about this. We actually did Solar Revolution, the movie Solar Revolution, and the literally BBC refused to let us. I shouldn't actually categorize it as BBC. It was certain uh, political figures within BBC that would not allow us to use certain clips within the Solar Revolution film because we actually caused alarm for this no, the reason race. is they, they, they tried to limit the information about it being... It's all about wi- telecommunication and the grid and, and everything along, else. But what about along, us? If you what come a- along and start talking about it in terms of biology, then it looks what like... What about us? Nobody talks about what happens to the human civilization. Because we are going to change. This is true. And this is, whether it's solar revolution or packing for Mars or any event that's going to happen on this planet, we as human civilization, and it doesn't matter, and, 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 and I mean this in the nice, gentle sort of way, it doesn't matter how much you hum and haw and, and, and get into your religious dogma and meditation. It's great to meditate and to align with certain frequencies. I'm not saying that, but this is not about judgment. This is about physics. 
Well, I, I look. It's going to change. I, I look at religious beliefs and things of that nature. I look at it as just like time. It's man-made. I, I think you know, and, and I don't. I mean that with all respect. Not that you know. Hey, if you're if you got religious beliefs, all the power to you. But uh, but you know, I think when it comes down to it, it's much bigger than any religion or or or, or anything of that matter. It's exactly right, Michael. This is way bigger than us. Yeah, yeah. It's just being ready and being prepared. And, and, and meditation and all these modalities are great because it allows us to better handle what's coming. But in the end, we're talking about frequency. Frequency and energy equals the nature of our reality. Mm-hmm. Period. This is physics. And we just have to better be prepared for the frequency and energy that's going to be headed towards us. And whether it's Nibiru or Planet X or the particles in the in the in the in the the cosmos coming towards us and and solar radiation or the cosmic rays, in the end, we just need to be prepared. So what what do you think happens? I mean, what about everybody? We talk about this change for our consciousness and, and all that you know stuff but what about everybody who's who's passed before us what what about all of them i mean have they already moved on do you think to uh some other timeline or how do, how does all that come together is is there a collective consciousness that that comes together <laughs> yes god <laughs> bless them for being on the other side you know every film we've ever made We've had somebody pass before we could finish editing the film and releasing it. You know why? I actually believe every single one of these profound presenters have been there working with us on the other side. Because we're all in it collectively. Whether we're on this side or that side, we're on it collectively and consciously. Interesting. Yeah, and like Michael Persinger was telling us, you know, we learned and and the idea that the magnetic field gathers and uh, and stores all of the experience and all of the cause and effect that every single soul on Earth has ever done. So that's one place that, for sure, we know that your life is documented. So every mm-hmm. life is documented and will exist um, permanently. It's a living, Unless, breathing time capsule, Michael. Until that magnetic field is dispersed. And what happens mm-hmm. to it then, you know, we don't know. But, uh, you know, Ernst Zinkowski's work in transcommunication is interesting mm-hmm. because he's hearing voices of people that are actually in those other dimensions that you're referencing here. I mean, he we received his... His his assistant, you know, Giza Droga, mm-hmm. she was she has been in touch with us since he passed and she passed along a picture to us that was taken where you can he's see He's come through he's since we released in, the film. Yeah. You can he's actually like see Houdini. Him. He's come through from <laughs> the it's veil. It's so wild, Michael. It's just this picture of him. It's just so clearly him. He is him. working so hard to come through the veil to prove to us he's still here for the release of this film like Houdini did back in the days. So we might be invisible no to each other in certain resonances and yeah. certain frequencies, but it by no means means that it's over. It's an it end. just means it just it's means it's the end of on one another adventure. It's the end of one. It's like tuning into another radio station. Right. And I'm sure you can relate to that analogy. Yeah. You know? So we, you know, we're going to tune into another radio station, That's and we're right. going to we're going to connect. We're going to connect again. And I think you know uh, the the base, the most simple way you could describe it is you've often probably had the feeling that you've run into somebody which mm-hmm. seems very very familiar, like you've known him your whole life. Oh yeah. And and these are the people that are part of our our family and i think our family will always be with us and Mm -hmm. wherever i go and i've traveled quite a bit uh and tanya's traveled a lot Mm -hmm. you find those family members all over the globe you find people that you instantly connect with it doesn't matter if you've only known them for five minutes and these are the people that we travel through you know these dimensions together with through Mm -hmm. through time as we make it you know we make up these envelopes of time so we can experience each other physically for Mm -hmm. a time and then we move on and we manifest another matrix somewhere else for us to continue the lessons and the uh, the consciousness development that we need to do that's right 
Fascinating. I, I've got a few uh, questions here from some of the listeners. Uh, so uh, I got them by email here. So I'll throw those at you uh, quickly. And then I'll give you the floor to get out anything that you like. And uh, so let's start with, uh, let's see, we got Mary. She's in Wisconsin, I think that is. Uh, says, what would be the benefits of destroying Earth and going to Mars? Well, I guess the thing is, it's important for, for a message that we really... Uh, want to make sure it gets out in the film is that it's not about um, getting to Mars really necessarily or that that's the answer. Right. I think there's a lot of things on planet Earth which need fixing. And I think if we put as much energy into solving or the problems here or even just eliminating some of the problems, like mm -hmm. it's really difficult to swallow the idea that well over a 100 years we're told that the prime force of energy and transportation mm -hmm. is still carbon-based technologies, that we need cars or it's we need not. big engines or turbines, things that are spinning that require massive amounts of mm -hmm. carbon to be burned for the, for the energy to create movement. I find that idea is ab absurd and, and, ab and obnoxious and archaic, and I know that there are... And that, 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 and, you know, I would, I would challenge any president or any other... Uh, nation leader of a of a big uh, of a large sophisticated technologically Especially evolved nation zero point to put as much yes to put as much energy in, uh, and and to put mm -hmm. the think tank of the ten most promising energies and fund them adequately and I, and I bet you you see you see a solution emerging within it's very really short not about packing for Mars so it's not about going to Mars it's actually about you know, there is, it's, a, it's about identifying this idea mm -hmm. that there's this faction of people who are saying they've gone to Mars mm -hmm. and they're going there because they've abandoned us in a way. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to realize, hey, we can't abandon us. We need to right. pull it together now. We have the opportunity and we're getting help. We're that's getting right. a lot of help. And, the, and Laura the Eisenhower talks were, about yes, this. That's, it's that's about not abandoning the problems we have here. It's that's about right. addressing the problems we have here rather right. than going out there and making the same mistakes. Right, right. What's so that's point? that's what we're coming from. And there's that there's mm -hmm. that line in the film with uh, you know, with with Big Bai and Nijnema who mm -hmm. says, you know, why would, they, why would they go someplace else? Unless, I mean, why would they destroy Earth unless right. they had, unless they had else somewhere to else to go? So if those, if those factions or people that are planning those things are going to go there, by all means, do it. But I think there's a lot of opportunities for us here on Listen, Earth. Listen, we have so much valuable here to protect. We do. And we, we unless really a grand do. cosmic cycle is going to happen, whether it's an asteroid, a meteor, a heavenly body that flies by and, 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 and affects our environment we have to look at what we have and what we have is so precious and why wouldn't we not focus on what we have here and protect that you know i one of my concerns is when you talk about uh even a planet x scenario or a pole shift or any of that anything any scenario even an emp that knocks the power out my biggest fear, and I've repeated this many times because it is, uh, it would be my biggest fear if, if the power, any of that happened, all these nuclear power plants that we have around the planet, those would be, the, that would be the kill shot. And that's why, you know, I think that uh, this move in consciousness, I think, includes getting rid of stuff that, uh, that pretty much we're sitting on a time bomb. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree. A nuclear energy, you know, even even solar energy. I mean, okay, great, it's clean and stuff, but do you really want to litter the the, the entire countryside with thousands and millions of uh, of of mirror reflectors that just? I'd rather have trees eventually there, to be your with. star will die, mm -hmm. and it is about even circumventing or or surpassing the technology of solar activity because your star will eventually die. And many planetary systems have lived with a dying star. Yeah. This is all part of it. it. It's like even solar technology is ancient technology. And we're not advocating to go after solar technology. We're saying that there's technology there and technology that is accessible by the human species to, to surpass this. 
Uh-huh. We are a human faring civilization that is ready to enter the cosmic civilization, period. It is time. And the Earth is a wombing planet, a wombing planet of many civilizations, and we are just one of them. And we are going to become a spacefaring civilization, and we are at that cusp right now. Yeah. We're really at that cusp. Well, I, I hope that we get there before, you know, anything bad happens. It's just, a, you know, you look now and uh, people talk about prophecies and all these other things. And, and I can't say, you know, what prophecies are real or which ones aren't. I can say that, you know, you look around and things do look a little grim. But uh, I have the hope that every one of us on this planet, We'll come together. Maybe not everybody, but we need as many as we can get. Come together, and we, the people, are the ones who need to change this paradigm. Uh, we can't expect a superhero to come out a, a white hat or a president or anything like that. It's going to take all of us understanding our place. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We're all in this together. It's a collective process. And I think the human species is quite uh, incredible in terms of, you know, when it is facing a massive crisis, it's amazing how quickly solutions can pop up and how people can pool together and find a way out of the, uh, the you quagmire. You know, I'm ready to, do, I'm, I'm prepping right now on another feature film in Hollywood uh, phenomenal cast. I can't t- tell you so much about it, but it, it's going to be a fantastic movie about 9-11. And it's a prime example about an entire culture and nation pulling together um, at a time where they all need it, really need each other. And it's an amazing, the, the collective is an amazing thing when it needs to pull together to unify a force. And, 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 and with this next feature that we're doing, it's an example of that. It's about a collective pulling together and being there for each other in a time of great need. And it goes beyond 9-11. 9-11 was a major thing with, with the political and nation catastrophe. Oh, it when sure we was. talk about worlds and universes, <laughs> it's a time where we need to pull together as a world. And those times are coming. And we have the ability. I saw it with 9-11. And how the nation pulled together. We have the ability to pull together as a human race for the coming times that are happening on this planet. There are rogue. Uh, well, we don't need to go there with that. Yeah. I mean, I just think, you know, I think it's a good message to put out there that we really do have the ability here to, you know, pool our, our minds and pool our resources and. It's not necessarily about going to Mars. It's about going, you know, it's about including us in terms of our cosmos as one and about you looking at what we have right here on this planet before we even necessarily think about going to other planets. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're getting down on time, so I want to be able to uh, give you both the floor. Uh, get out anything that you'd like, uh, whether it be appearances, uh, definitely where people could get the movie. We know we got you linked up on our website, but there might be people listening other places. As a matter of fact, I sure. know there is. So um, we can just go ahead and each one of you t- take a turn and no rush. Go right ahead. Well, of course, the best place for people to learn more about the film is to go to the official website and that's packingformarsmovie.com that's the place you're going to find um, more information about who's in the film or where we're going to be uh, showing the film Uh, we have plans of course in the near future to screen the film on on large screens in california we're going to be at conscious life expo in february we're going to be at the ufo congress in phoenix also in February, uh, and we're going to be showing the film in Nexus Conference in June in Australia. Uh, so these things are all available on, on the website. You can see on the press and tour pages. Uh, if you want to read and research 
uh, more about the subject, that's a good starting point. Also, if you want to read more about um, you know the film and what others have said about the film, the press page is a great place to go. Uh, we also um, are open to more uh, people interested in doing to getting the message out. If they want to interview us, if they want to write articles about us, we're totally open. Um, and it's just, um, I think for us, it's it's a time right now where we're stepping back from working on another film in this area, but we'd rather spend some time and get this film out there into the world. So we're just a small team with a big job, and anything that uh, someone feels inspired to help us with, we're open to. We've been getting some great information. I mean, we've had people approach us that are working on inside levels of the government that told us, uh, you know, from their own experiences mm -hmm. that there's direct conversation, mm -hmm. con confirmation of of some of the things that we have in the film. You know, we haven't been able to look at the people in our film as kind of like the uh, the collective um, the collective character mm -hmm. of many uh, many many others. There's so, so many uh, whistleblowers and so many participants. Uh, in these programs and in, in scientists and journalists that basically are represented in this film. So, you know, you can't possibly put everybody into a two-hour mm -hmm. film. Two hours is already a long amount of time. But each of these people represent countless others that have their own experiences to tell. So we just hope that it inspires you to open your mind up to the limitless possibilities that we have and that you share the message with as many people as possible. If you go to packingformarsmovie.com, you will find the links to Real House where you can stream it live. You'll be given a 48-hour window rental period to screen the film. Uh, coming uh, International UFO Congress and Conscious Life Expo, which we're both screening as a, a premier special exclusive screening. Uh, the UFO Congress is February 17th to the 21st. And the uh, Conscious Life Expo, we're actually doing an exclusive screening right after the UFO panel on February 21st. Um, you can rent on Real House, uh, realhouse.com. You'll get those links through packingformarsmovie.com. We will have exclusive DVDs available uh, at these two events. Uh, we will eventually be selling on Amazon. Uh, we will wait uh, for theatrical and film festival submissions right now to release on Amazon. Uh, we will be at Nexus. Nexus has been gracious with Duncan Rose to promote not only Packing for Mars, but Leslie Watkins' Alternative 3. Uh, we will be doing a Sydney exclusive screening in Sydney, Australia uh, in April. And then we will follow up with the Nexus Conference in June. So those are the the uh, tentative uh, premiere dates right now. You can go on more our Packing for Mars coming. tour page. Um, yeah, and more will be coming soon. So just check with the website if you're interested, and you'll learn more about where the film's going to be screening, uh, if we're going to be there, if we'll be doing Q&As, uh, and any radio shows that we've done, just like Michael Vera's. We will be um, posting sure on the press that, page. I'm sure there's probably an archive of this uh, this radio program somewhere on your website, Michael. Isn't that not uh, the case? It, it is. And if you'd like, uh, tomorrow I could send you a link for it. Perfect. And then awesome. we'll, we'll permanently promote the press links on our press page so that you can always get to these wonderful shows like with Michael Vera at late night at Netherlands.com. And we will have everything posted on our Packing for Mars press page. All right, great. And I hope you'll both keep me in mind. Any new films you got uh, coming out? Uh, this has been, I mean, we've talked two and a half hours about a two hour film. I mean, so. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could go another three or four hours, Michael. That's it's right. great. Well, you know, for us, it's like, you know, it's that. Uh, it's that precious time in the middle of the night when everything is quiet. Yeah, so it's been a very, you, yeah, very cool time. No, it's time. like 6 in the morning here. When we started the show, it was 3.30 a.m. We're in the middle of a blizzard on top We're of the, the Alps in the middle of Bavaria in the middle of a massive snowstorm. So it's wonderful to reach out to your listeners. 
Well, yeah, thanks a lot for having us on your show, Michael. It's oh, really good. Fun, you, fun show. You better believe it. And I thank you both for uh, reaching out to me. And, and I look forward to having more shows in the future. I've really enjoyed Perfect. talking with you. And great thank job on the film. So thank you. All right. Have a great night, uh, both of you. You too. Stay you warm. Too. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. There they go. Tanya Maddenford and Frank Jacob. Again, the film is Packing for Mars, and you could find it on uh, the link for it on late night in the midlands.com. And of course, I think it's been passed along in the chat room as well. I haven't kept a keen eye on the chat room tonight. Um, I've been doing, I've been kind of just engaged in my conversation as a host should be, right? So, uh, a great show tonight. I'm still, I'm still stuck on that, uh, time warp generator, folks. Um, this is real technology. And maybe I shouldn't, someone like me shouldn't have my hands on technology like that, but I want it. I want to have my hands on it. I would love to go back and tell myself things. Like, I don't know. I'd like to go back and slap me in the back of the head and say, hey, don't don't pick up them cigarettes. Now, of course, I don't smoke now, but I used to. It would have been nice not to even go through any of that, right? But then you look, and I guess everything that we've done in our past has brought us to who we are now in the present. And I think if you go back and change any of that, it might be like stepping on one of those butterflies. So maybe it's best that... We don't, but now listen, okay, maybe not go back and change anything, but I'd certainly like to take a, a, a jump to Mars or the moon. I really, really, really like that. That would be like a, that'd be, that, that'd be it. That would, that would you know, like cure a lot of my curiosity. Just let me go up there and, and take a jump. I would, I would love to do it. But uh, I don't know, maybe in my lifetime we'll have these types of things. Maybe we'll be able to do it. I don't know, um, folks, but we are. We, are, we have come to some times, uh, this timeline we're on right now. It's right now it's not at its best and it's up to us folks. We can change it. So why don't we do that? I mean, we're trying to do it every night here on late night in the Midlands. Uh, we take it one night at a time, one show at a time, one truth at a time. And by doing that, we're able to lay out this big, big puzzle and just pull piece in at a time, a piece of here, a piece there, and and we're putting it together. And will it ever be finished? I don't know. People before me have been putting this puzzle together, so I've kind of scooped over. Like every time I have a guest, I scoop some of their pieces over, and I try to fit them in to where I have holes. And, you know, if we all continue to do that and just keep working on this puzzle together, we will complete it, and we will be able to say we now know the truth, I think. I don't know if we'll ever know the truth about everything, but, boy, we could sure get into some stuff, can't we? All right, tomorrow night I've got psychic Chris Medina joining me. He's coming back. It's been uh, been over a month since he's been with us. So he'll be back. Uh, we'll take calls. So uh, call in. We'll see how everything goes. And it should be a full show and should be a lot of fun with Chris, uh, who rejoins us tomorrow night. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of good stuff going this week. Just go check the schedule. Uh, Friday is still up in the air. I don't know. I had a guest signed for Friday, but he hasn't sent me everything I've asked for. Uh, so I might be going another way on Friday. So that's still blank there, but I'll get it filled in here before we get too close to that date. Uh, folks, go, get over to late night in the midlands.com, become a member, be informed, hit the share buttons, let people know that there is an alternative to the lies and gatekeeping that goes on out there. And it's late night in the Midlands. It's the L&M Radio Network, folks. I thank Ira and Jolene for all they do, program managers, uh, webmasters, and, of course, moderators in the chat room. Thank you all. All of our listeners, wherever you may be around the world, Chat rooms, wherever you are, this has been a broadcast of Late Night in the Midlands on the LNM Radio Network. Keep your eyes posted to the sky because you never know what you might see. And keep your ears posted to this broadcast because you never know what you might learn. Good night, everybody. Stay 
tuned for more right here on the LNM Radio Network.